Well, holy cow, we're back, Cody. We're back. We're back. What's up, guys? It's been a while. I know. Packers haven't been doing anything like the last two or three months. It's like they're out of business or something. I have no idea. Like, I'm going nuts without Packer content. Like, they've done, like, nothing besides re-sign a couple guys since since Tom Brady handed us our ass. So, I've been, like, super fucking bored. What's yeah, up? But we got the draft coming up soon, man. Maybe Goot has had a, a big plan on uh, – he knows that the, the the rule change to jersey numbers pisses Brady <laughs> off, so he's gonna he's working out a new system to change all the numbers for our defensive players. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, maybe that's the big plan this off season. <laughs> maybe, um, yeah. I mean, we could talk about all the off season stuff for all day long, but we're here primarily because it's it's draft week now. We're less than a week away from draft week, and. Uh, us here over here at Context been hard at work putting together some mock draft stuff. We're ready to finally share it. Uh, probably not going to get any of my personal mock draft picks right, but it's fun to do regardless. And we're kind of going to start with some of my draft, my draft crushes and who I think the Packers might be targeting or who I would prefer them to take. Um, and then we're going to transition that into doing a little mock drafts simulator and we'll kind of talk through it and just provide some analysis and just kind of have some fun with it so what yeah, better like, way to spend a friday it. it's uh it's like a a mock christmas <laughs> right right so let's see just get right into it i suppose and fresh hot off the press literally just made this thing just a couple minutes ago so for how i forgot how to use it what's the was what it f5 to do a full screen thing f11 i think man i am technology is there it is i was gonna like technology is passing me by there we go <laughs> holy okay so I'm actually doing some trades in this one. I think uh, Green Bay's got 10 picks right now. I feel like we have a lot of holes, even though we went to the NFC Championship back-to-back years. Um, So I think Goot's going to kind of wheel and deal a little bit. There's no way that we stick with 10 draft picks. I can see us moving up in the first. I can see us moving back out of the first. Um, I don't really see us staying, though. I mean, maybe, but. Uh, for mine, I think we move back. I think if, uh, if we can get some good value, um, I think we find a trade partner with the Jets. It's going to be a trade very similar to what we did with the Browns back in 2017, uh, where the Browns gave us their 33rd and 106 uh, for our 29, I believe it was. So this is basically the same value. Um, Jets are rebuilding, and they could be looking. They, are, they do have two first-round picks already, but they could be moving up to maybe find themselves like maybe a wide receiver, uh, maybe a tackle to go with uh, since it's pretty much a given that they're taking a quarterback now. So I could see them kind of going like quarterback, receiver, tackle with three first-round picks. So I I will be very curious to see uh, once we start doing the mock um, how the board falls Mm -hmm. because to me, any trade scenario – absolutely hinges on the players available um and i'm i'm curious if if you had any specific guys in mind that you think the jets might want to jump ahead of other teams to snag yeah so what kind of influenced me today was um the chiefs in the baltimore trade at 31 so baltimore now owns the 31st pick in the draft um I think Baltimore could be targeting a wide receiver there at 31. Uh, They're a wide receiver needy team. Um, And if the Jets don't go wide receiver with their first two first round picks, maybe they, they're going quarterback with that first pick. And the second one, I think they're probably going to go a tackle uh, to go because they need a right tackle as well. So if they don't go tackle or if they don't go wide receiver and someone like, I don't know, a Kadarius Tooney, Rondell Moore, Terrence Marshall, one of them starts falling. I could see them maybe moving up 
thinking that Baltimore might be taking one of those receivers at 31. Um, maybe thinking Buffalo may even take one. Uh, they're at 30. I could see them maybe moving up and willing to give up. And you get that extra fifth round option on them too by moving back up in the first round. So you get an extra year of uh, of a rookie contract on them. So that's kind of, that was my thinking on that one. All right. Well, yeah, I, like I said, man, I'll, I'll be interested to see how mm-hmm. that board falls. Um, yeah, trade projecting trades, it's just it's, it's like tough. a whole le- another level of like astrophysics. Oh, too. yeah. It, it's hard enough as it is, so of course I had to throw some trades in there and make it even harder. Um, the Seahawks only own four picks in this draft, so I definitely think they're going to want to move back sometimes and try to acquire as many picks as possible. They are not in a position where they can just – Literally get by on like three or four draft picks. They still need to round out their roster. Um, so this is a pretty modest trade for them. Uh, we move up, you know, six spots. Maybe we find someone that we like um, that we don't think might be there. It doesn't cost us much. We give up our comp pick in the fifth round to move up six spots. It does fit the value chart, by the way, either. Almost pretty spot on. Um, not like it's not identical, but Seahawks might be willing to kind of take a little bit of a lesser value, you get an extra draft pick because they're not in a position to negotiate too well with only having four picks. So we we move up, and uh, yeah, I, I can up. definitely I can see a trade like that. We we have a history mm-hmm. of trading with the Seahawks, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, as you mentioned, so few picks they might be willing to take a little bit less value on the draft chart just to get more bites at the apple. Yeah, as I'm looking at our picks, we have 10 picks. I don't think we use all 10. I think we're going to have less than that. And we draft in the back end of every draft. So once we start getting those comp picks in like the fourth and fifth rounds and the sixth rounds, we have double picks in fourth, fifth, and sixth. Why not start packaging some of them together and move up in the same round type thing? Um, And that's kind of what I start doing here in in round three. So I package our third round pick and that – that fourth round pick that we acquired with the trade with the Jets uh, gives us about a 212 value uh, to move up to the early portions of round three. We move up like 16 spots in the draft um, trade with the Giants um, who are also rebuilding and could use perhaps maybe an extra fourth rounder there um, to pick up an extra piece for their, for their team. So uh, we could be picking again early in round three. Maybe I would. This would be a trade I would like to. I would like to see us do move up and get yeah, early I mean, round two pick. A, a nice sweet spot it, as far as the value. Uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong here, but tracking along, uh, where we'd be using the Jets second round pick, uh, and then the Seahawks second round pick, um, and then the Giants third round pick, and then we would still have uh, our fourth rounder and our fourth round comp. Yeah, um, we still have two fourth rounders after this too. Yep. And one fifth and two six still. So we've really only given up like one one pick right now. Like we one last pick still right now. Yep. Um and this is the last trade I do with us. Um and that's where I just package both of our fourth rounders to move up about, I don't know, fifteen spots uh with the Browns. Uh and the values match up again there. So we we pretty much just move up in the fourth. Uh, again, I think that would be a smart move for Goo to do in multiple rounds. Uh, even if he doesn't go crazy with the rounds one and two trades like I did, I'd be perfectly fine if he took, uh, if he packaged both of his round fours, fives and six to move up in rounds four, five and six, you know, in the draft. Like what we'd walk away with seven draft picks, uh, but we would be drafting probably in the top end of rounds four, five, and six, and in all those rounds by doing so, which I'd be I'd be okay with that. Yeah, yeah, that can definitely make a big difference. Um, yeah, man, you you've got us wheeling and dealing here, a lot a lot of moves, but I, I like it. You're getting us into like uh, the the core of the draft, where where you mm-hmm. really uh, have a shot at a lot of talented players um, that that line up with value. Yeah. So here's kind of the total picks that that I'm going to be working with when I go through my personal uh, fun mock draft here. We're going to have two two seconds, a third, a fourth, a fifth, two sixths, and a seventh. Um, yeah, so here's kind of what I'm thinking with. I went The hardest pick on this was to go with a round two pick. I changed it about three times today. Um, 
but I kind of settled on Asante Samuel Jr. Uh, there's a good chance that we take him at 29 if we don't move, and there's a good chance he could be off the board by 29. Uh, I've seen Asante Samuel go anywhere from like 20th all the way to like the mid second round. Uh, I mean, I think he would fit in great in Green Bay. Uh, he basically be like another Jair Alexander clone. Has the same type of swagger, almost the same traits. Um, I, but I almost also feel like because he is so similar to Jair, we might not take him because I do feel like Green Bay might want a taller corner opposite of Jair, even though he is he could be a pro bowler himself. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Green Bay's weird like that. So um, the other players I thought about was Eric Stokes, uh, cornerback out of Georgia. He's 6'3 and ran a 4.2, blazing fast, uh, a little bit more raw than Asante Samuel. Um, but he is also a round two talent, like a mid round two. I could see us maybe taking him. And uh, my other pick that um, I was really thinking of was um, a defensive tackle named uh, Levi uh, Anwu Jerike. Yeah, I knew I was going to butcher that, but he really stood out. I mean, uh, that defensive lineman, amazing first step, can't be single blocked. I like, I watched all of his tape. Like, not a single blocker. Like, you have to double the team that guy all the time. Um, but, again, he's still a little raw. Uh, I don't know if he would go as – I've seen him go anywhere from round one to four. Like, it's crazy on his draft thing. So, but I went with Asante yeah. Samuel Jr. Yeah, I mean, it, to comment on those options that you're considering, um, you know, uh, Le- Levi, whatever, uh, most of what I've seen on him, um, pretty – like pretty much a consensus that he's the second best defensive tackle in the class uh, that he has a, a lightning fast first step and, and great uh, hand combat skills a um, little bit undersized. Uh, so, so he's more of a, a penetrator than a space eater. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, the, the thing about adding to the defensive line is, is it, it really adds to your defense as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I could, be happy with a pick like that uh you know it, you do have to take defensive line rookies with you have to give them a yeah. little bit of patience um because they don't always come in as a rookie with a big contribution uh as far as the corners um yeah eric stokes uh kind of kind of some similarities to kevin king just in terms yeah. of the, the yeah. size and speed like those athletic traits but he, mm-hmm. he needs time to refine his game um and asante samuel jr uh you know i love bloodlines man um Same. And, and the packers you know i i think they do place a value on bloodlines as well going back to clay matthews jr mm-hmm. or sorry clay matthews the third rather um and yeah dude asante samuel jr he he does have that swagger he is a ball hawk mm-hmm. just like his father was um i i would be happy with that pick uh I will say though, I I don't think the Packers make it, uh, just because he doesn't meet their traditional yeah. threshold, and I I think it would I think they made an exception for Jair because they saw so much potential in him, um, but I don't think Brass would feel comfortable with two short guys on the bottom. Right. Maybe if they see uh, Samuel playing the slot, like maybe he can Samuel play the play slot. Him. He can play the slot. Um. A lot of the pundits, draft pundits, say that he's best suited for man coverage, and he actually never played a lot of zone coverage in at, at Florida State. So he, I mean, he'd be a little bit behind the eight ball. They're not saying he, he can't do it, but he, they don't have a lot of tape on him doing. And we do play a lot of zone, so. Yeah, I mean that is one interesting thing that because uh, we we never have like a specific um, episode this off season talking about. Uh, mm-hmm the the new defense um but yeah it's joe barry does uh my understanding is he does want to run a lot of zone Mm -hmm. which is curious to me considering our all pro corner jair alexander his strength is man uh so i'm almost wondering if we're going to treat him like jalen ramsey and just say follow the team's number one receiver and everyone else is playing zone around you 
Well, he could, if he brings the true Rams playbook to us, he could start doing what the Rams started doing to us in the playoffs, which is insanely difficult to probably implement. But he was basically running two defensive coverages on the same play. He was just cutting the field in half. Like Jair would be playing man, but Kevin King would be playing zone. Uh, the left side of the field would be playing in like a cover four while the right side of the field would be playing in some type of a cover cover two type zone like it's crazy like they were doing like half, splitting the field in half and just like doing I don't know like they, they were trying to just confuse Rodgers and I mean it was kind of working to a point but our running game was working well that that day so but yeah I mean we, we sp so I did think that the uh what we do with our first pick really is going to dictate how we draft going forward I found that as I'm picking this going forward where like the rest of the draft um I know they take the best player available, but if the best player available on the board is another cornerback in round two, I don't necessarily see them taking back-to-back -back corners in round two, you know, like, so. It wouldn't be the first time. Gustav. Maybe it could be. I mean, there's players that I liked at the spot, like Tyson Campbell. Like I will, I'm in love with Tyson Campbell. Um, but I don't know if they would take back-to-back -back corners. I, and it's a pretty loaded tackle class. I'm going with Jalen Mayfield. Uh, watched a lot of tape on him. Uh, he played both uh, left and right tackle in college. He can also, he's also played at guard as well. And what I like about Jalen Mayfield is he's already uh, tested with elite talent. Um, he's, there's tape on him going up and holding his own against Chase Young. Uh, there's, there's multiple times where he uh, basically shuts Chase Young down multiple times. And even at times when Chase Young gets the better of him, he's shown the ability to correct and still make the block on him without giving up the sack. So uh, Jalen Mayfield was the pick I went with here. Um, obviously, there's some other tackles I like here as well. I like uh, Liam Eichenberg, uh, the tackle of Notre Dame. Uh, Walker Little. Little was a guy I really, really liked. I'm not sure if he would still be on the board here. Walker Little was someone who was basically just like elite off the charts, but didn't hasn't played too much. Um, so the tape's still kind of like they're not sure where he's at right now. He's basically been off for like almost two years now. So Walker Little is one who really intrigued me. But I'm going with Jalen Mayfield here, man. So. Yeah, so I I'm I'm interested in this, and I do like uh, that it it sounds like the way the board fell. There there was some good offensive line options with that second pick uh and you know i, I kind of love that hit in corner and then tackle um but uh so i i haven't had the opportunity to watch as much tape as you um but i jalen mayfield is a guy who really intrigues me because everything i've read um you know evaluations from different guys uh you know ranking boards and then uh, countless mock drafts this is a guy who people's opinions on him are all over the place uh, i have some people who think he, he's a late first rounder uh other people i see him going in the fourth um and and as you said you know he he comes from a big program um tested against elite talent uh but i do know his his athletic testing scores you know his, his relative athletic score um significantly below what the packers typically look for uh in the gutekunst area era we've typically gone for elite athletes mm -hmm. um so i'm i'm just curious uh how you saw his tape matching up against guys like walker little or uh liam eichenberg I, well, I personally think that those players could probably be off the board by the time we're picking at this spot here. So unless I wanted to go with a tackle earlier in 33, um, I do, I, after Mayfield, there really weren't a lot of prospects that I felt really comfortable with. Um, so I really felt like pulling the gun with Mayfield. Like we're talking about Brady Christensen after this. I really didn't like the tape on him. Um, James Hudson was on the board. Uh, he, he could be an option. Uh, He's, he's a high upside um, tackle. However, he's super raw. He's not going to come in uh, and be able to contribute right away. Um, I did see, I just thought Mayfield watching the tape, given his experience playing against other, you know, well-known NFL caliber, caliber talent, 
he could come in and he could probably, I mean, he'd take his licks, but um, he could probably be our starting right tackle from day one, I think. All right. Now, now sorry, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but it's just uh, the offensive tackles in this class really interest me. Uh, mm-hmm. so, so I do want to touch on this a little bit more. Um, so first question would be, you know, having watched Mayfield's tape, um, are you completely confident that he, he can play as a tackle uh, or do you see any possibility that he might be better suited kick into the inside? He might start his career off as a guard and we'll move. Uh, I mean, we could use like move Billy Turner back out to tackle. Right tackle will be starting to like start the year off. Um, I also probably believe that Elton Jenkins will probably be playing left tackle for us for until uh, um, Bach gets back. I mean, that's I, I think that's going to be pretty pretty viable. So I could see us. I mean, if he's moving to guard, I think he would definitely be you know day one starter for us. You could I mean if we take him, we could be seeing some some type of. Uh, Day one lineup of like Elton Jenks at left tackle, Runyon at left guard. Um, who do we run out center? Um, Patrick. Yeah, Lucas Patrick at center, and then Mayfield right guard and uh, Turner at right tackle. So mm-hmm. right. I know they're pretty high on um, Yosh Neiman too. By the way, I've heard I've, I'm hearing he's been progressing pretty well in can- or from what they've seen so far. They're pretty high on him. I don't know if they're you know like if he's going to be any more than deaf, like, like a good deaf rotational piece, but I'm hearing good things. Yeah. That's actually uh, one thing that no one's really talking about very much uh, in these mock drafts. Um, you know, they, they see that uh, Bakhtiari is injured um, mm-hmm. and that we lost Rick Wagner and we lost Corey Lindsley and everyone's freaking out like, Oh, we got to plug these holes. And, you know, I, Personally, I think offensive line is like the most important position on the team mm-hmm. besides quarterback. So I, I am always a fan of drafting linemen high, mm-hmm. uh, but I will say, I, I don't know if the Packers are as worried about it as all the fans might be. I don't think they are either. I don't get that feeling that they are. Um, I mean, I think, I think they're going to give uh, Runyon and Stepaniak and Hanson uh a, a chance to duke it out on the inside and yeah maybe yash nishman like maybe he does step up this year i mean he mm-hmm. he was a extremely raw but elite athlete mm-hmm. and he's had i think this will be year three for him um mm-hmm. so maybe uh but so the other question i want to touch on real quick before we head into round three uh so you said that you were down on brady christensen watching his tape um so I'm, I'm just curious what specifically uh, turned you off with him, because uh, from what I've read, um, I actually thought he sounded like a pretty good fit for the Packers based on, uh, you know, they were talking about blocking for Zach Wilson um, mm-hmm. and, and his tendency to go off script and, and kind of improvise much like Rogers has done throughout his career. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they said that's, you know, that's a kind of blocking that uh, it can take a lot of time to get used to. And, and Christensen has been doing that for, for years now um, and doing it pretty well from what I understand. Uh, so I'm curious, what about his tape turned you off? Well, I'll, I'll look at my notes right now. And I get, I, well, I, I got down to Brady Christensen here and I just wrote no next to it. Just no. <laughs> um so I believe if I if I remember right, I remember watching some of his tape, and I remember that he got he, he was getting stunted pretty good uh, on some on some outside rushers. He I, he was getting beat I think pretty good by like elite pass rushers, like like you know the high end speed ones. Like he, he could hold his own against like the average college kid, but you know when you get to the NFL, they were they would probably routinely beat him on the outside. And I believe if I remember right, not but. but last couple weeks I've been watching pretty much every tackle so I might get a couple of them confused but I remember there was one defensive end that just put on that put him on roller skates just like a pretty it looked like a pretty average like inside swim move uh stunned to the outside went inside put him on skates and next thing you know that quarterback's you know down there and I'm like you can't do that in the NFL man like like Aaron Rodgers gonna send you right back to the bench um 
and it was on like a highlight tape type thing too for him. So I'm like, man, if you're putting that stuff on highlight tapes, um, I mean, I, I didn't sit here and watch like 30, 40 minutes of them. I probably did about, you know, between five to 10 minutes and I would probably get about, you know, 30 or 40 snaps uh, out of them and then going through all the things. So it's tough to really make an educated guess without going crazy, crazy on them. But um, yeah, you're not paid to be a scout. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I just didn't like his tape enough to like yeah. make me want to go with him in round two. Yeah. So I mean, I, I will say based on what you've just described, like it kind of sounds like he struggles with stunts. Yeah. To me, that seems like something that is coachable, seems like a technique thing. Um, where you know maybe he's just given too much leverage mm. with his shoulder angles. Um, but yeah, I I I'm you know, I was just I wanted to know more ma- about yeah. Mayfield because as I've said, I haven't watched his tape and I've seen him all over the rankings yeah. um, so if, if you feel like he's the best pick uh, i do like the idea of going tackle uh with that second pick i will say that probably my f- now we're not going to get into like the the top top guys here because they probably won't fall to us but one guy who could fall to us probably not to pick 56 but if he's on the board at 29 or if we move back to my 33 so i suggested is uh elijah vera tucker and from USC I don't even think he I think he's probably gone before 20 maybe I've seen him go like he I love this kid now he pretty much has a lot of tape at guard but he has played tackle as well and he can play all over the line Gutekunst like I could see Gutekunst maybe maybe even trading up for this guy um I put multiple stars next to him I think the top 15 pick I don't think we have a chance at sniffing him yeah, he, he played left tackle. He's played guard. He played, he's played in a zone blocking scheme, which is what we do. Uh, his tape at USC is pretty much the same offensive system that he would be playing here in Green Bay. So if he's, if he's mauling dudes and playing multiple – like he reminds me of like an Elton Jenkins almost. Like that's kind of what he reminds me of. So, yeah, I really like that guy. Uh, if he was there at 33 or 29, I wouldn't be mad if we take him uh, at all. But I don't even think he gets there, so – uh, round three was a really, really tough pick for me. Um, right off the bat, you're probably going to say like, man, he looks pretty skinny. I, I don't know if he's going to hold up. So he's an edge, but he's also a three technique, really. I, I see him as our three technique. Um, and he can, he's really diverse. As you can see on my bottom one, he can play a four, three DE, a three, four outside linebacker, a three, four DT. And his tape is his like his stats and intangibles are off the freaking charts now he's a pretty raw prospect just needs to be coached up but i can see this guy being a game wrecker he's 276 pounds by the way uh and he looks like that now uh i just for like comparison i looked up uh zadarius smith's weight and he's like right around the same weight as this guy and z plays you know outside linebacker and three technique as well for us so I think Rashawn Gary was like 290 or something like that. He's really not too much skinnier than that. Uh, he's a wrecker though, man. I like him a lot. Yeah, I mean, he's powerful and he's nasty. Six, foot six, uh, six foot six. Yeah, I, I would think he can add some weight and fill. Oh up yeah, more. So I'm I'm curious because um, I've heard a little bit about this guy, uh, but not a ton. Um, so what specifically? did he play in college? Was he a 4-3 DE? Was he a 3-4 outside backer? Was he on? Did he uh, have they, any third? Yeah, third? yeah. They, well, you see both. You can see both. In fact, we should probably just watch them. You know what? Let's just do it then. Let's watch a watch quick little highlight tape on him then. Yeah, let's yeah, let's fire it up. Yeah. Because I, I, a lot of people might be surprised by this pick, you know, thinking why the heck would you pick an edge when you've got Zadarius Smith, Preston Smith, and Rashawn Gary – well, we've got a lot of money tied up in our edge players. Um, I think it's a foregone conclusion that Preston Smith gets cut next year. And maybe even to Darius Smith. Like, we are in a very precarious cap situation next year, worse than we were this year. Um, so edge is a priority. It's a sneaky priority. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't necessarily mind spending a uh, round three pick on an edge if, if we could see him pairing up with Rashawn Gary a year from now. Yeah. It, yeah. If he can bump in out. So he's number 10. All 
I, I, I'm not sure if this is the one I watched. I did just kind of click on the first one. But, uh, uh, I don't believe you are screen sharing the video right now. We're still on. Oh, okay. Uh, so we're still on the PowerPoint. Let me do a, well, let me fix that then. New share and let's go with this. Now, hopefully, There we go. This will work. Yep, I think this is the tape I watch now, Adam. Yep. He'll be number 10. All right, so he's playing. His hand was in the dirt on that one. Just kind of held his block, just kind of stayed fundamental on that first play. Yeah, let's see that. That shot didn't particularly impress me. He didn't really shed that block. Okay, all right. I do think that, you know, he won't get a ton of playing time with this first year, but um, I did like to put the pressure on there. Uh, he should be, he, he's going to be kind of be, I seem kind of like a Rashawn Gary, like adds on 10, 15 pounds more muscle on top of what he can already do. Um, that's what I love right there. Actually, that was one of the, like that motor, his motor is insane, dude. Like he doesn't stop. He will, he got knocked down and still got up and still made the sack on him quick. It looked like a cornerback doing that. And he's supposed, he's 280 pounds. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Yes. Get him in green and gold. Like love to see that hustle. And, and, and the kind of length he has. Um, and that could be a three technique passes. That could be our new Dean Lowry on the line. You put Dean Lowry on that next Kenny Clark, a guy like that, yeah. With a motor like that and the speed to close, if you can get – if he can play a solid three technique with the pass rushers we already have and hold his own on in the trenches, man, that's nasty. It's just another guy breaking in. So, yeah, I liked him a lot. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I'll say watching that tape right there, uh, my first thoughts are um, relentless motor. Yep. Um, a lot of room for improvement technique-wise. Like, it doesn't seem like he's using mm -hmm. his hands very much. Yeah. Uh, but the good news is that's something that's coachable. You know, mm -hmm. if he coach that up, uh, he can start using that big, long frame um, to his advantage. And, and yeah, he probably he can probably add some weight and power. Um and and the versatility uh there, there was a lot of tape there of him lined up uh as a defensive mm -hmm. tackle um but also can play out on the edge yeah yeah, yeah I, I can see that yeah um i mean i guess the only thing i if i were going to draft this guy i would want a specific plan for him because i honestly i could see it going two ways i could see you either want to put him as the the three four outside linebacker um you know like Zadarius or mm. Rashawn, uh, or I could even see beefing him up and putting on that five technique to take over for a guy like Dean Dean Lowry. Yep. Uh, and you know he's mm. a big guy like that. He he could definitely beef up to. Th I bet you he could get close to three hundred without. Yeah, I believe it, I, and I would agree. If uh, if we don't go here and we still want to go with the trenches, another guy that was heavily on, I was concerned here who might not even be on the board. Um, he kind of has a, a round two grade on him in some, but I've also seen him drop to the fourth sometime. Is Osa Odigizua, the three technique out of UCLA. Um, I know our good friends over at Cheesehead TV, Nagler loves him. I did watch some tape on him. Uh, yeah, he's he's quick, got a good first step. Um, he's aggressive, and he and he's a lot bigger than uh, than him too. But he's not the pass rusher that uh, he's not the disruptor that this guy could be. So I just kind of went with the upside in this one. Uh, yeah, and the Packers, they, they've they shown to value disruptors. Um, mm -hmm. oh, oh. Don't necessarily, like, I, I think there's a, still a place in the game for space eaters mm -hmm. and fundamental tacklers. Um, but the, the Packers, they, they've, they've shown uh, that they value, you know, splash plays a little yeah. bit more. I will say one exception to that that has actually worked out wonderfully for the Packers is Jair Alexander. 
Um, right. You know, in college, he didn't put up a ton of interceptions. Uh, you know, it, he, he broke up a lot of passes, a uh, very, very high percentage of passes. Um, and that has been his game in the NFL as well. Uh, you know, so we don't quite get the splash plays we'd want out of him. But if he's shutting down half the field, I'll take mm-hmm. it. Right. Uh, moving on, I think so. We only have one round four pick. Did a lot of wheeling dealing with our fourth round picks. Uh, this is who I sell on at pick 110. Um, finally, uh, we go and get Aaron Rodgers a wide receiver. Finally, um, we do only have at the moment we have one wide receiver under contract for next year. Um, gotta assume that we're gonna hopefully resign Devontae and whatnot, but I think it's clear that MBS could be gone, EQ is gonna be gone. Uh, we're gonna have to resupply this uh, wide receiver. Uh, I could see us taking multiple wide receivers here. Um, and I really like Nico Collins. Uh, he kind of fits the mold of what Goody Cunts and the Packers go look for. He's 6'4", 215. He's a strong possession receiver. Uh, plays plays big boy football. Uh, fights with his hands to separate from defenders. Gets vertical to come away with a reception uh, when defenders are draped on. Finds the open spot in the field. Tracks passes in the air. He kind of remind me a lot of like uh, Kenny Galladay almost. Um, so let me ask there. you, Kenny Galladay, uh, I think the trait that makes him lethal, like, yes, he, he's a big body. Yes, he's physical, mm-hmm. but he has elite speed. He, he is a deep threat. Uh, what is Nico Collins' speed like? Uh, Nico Collins, I believe, is also a burner as well. Um, what was his 40 time here? Uh, he ran a 4.4. 40. Okay. All right, yeah. man. He's a burner, yeah, man. This completely fits the mold of yeah. receivers that the Packers have been drafting um, for, for the Matt LaFleur era. Uh, he loves these big, strong, fast guys that can block mm. well. Yeah, and, and, that, was, and, and that, was, that was another note I had on. He's a, he's a good blocker, and he also blocks down the field, too. Like, he'll, he'll make blocks down the field. So I know um, he loves – LaFleur loves his blocking – receivers uh this guy's definitely a blocking receiver uh as well so this guy was a guy i did i just this guy i like uh like i could see him maybe even going earlier in round four um i would not be mad if we took him in like round three even like this was guy i didn't really want to pass up on and i really hope green bay takes a really hard long look at him because i would love to see this guy in green and gold um yeah, man, and, and honestly, uh, looking at the receiver room, and, and like you said, next year, uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's pretty much the entire room is not under contract. You hope that we re-sign Devontae, but that's not a guarantee. Who knows? I, yeah, I mean, with the cap and shit him, and stuff. If, if, if he becomes the highest paid wide receiver in the league, uh, you're talking mm-hmm. over $27 million a year. I don't think that's doable. Uh, I mean, if he wants to – be a little more reasonable and stick around 20 mil a year, which I don't know why the Cardinals paid DeAndre Hopkins. Like they literally jumped by like six or 7 million from the next mm-hmm. closest guy. Um, so we might be able to negotiate Devonte closer to 20, but if we can't, he's gone. Um, and I think this team is really high in MBS. I think MBS is going to continue to grow. And I think we're going to try to resign him mid season. Uh, Alan Lazard, I personally, I love Alan Lazard, but mm-hmm. I could see the team taking a, an approach of like, Hey, unless he balls out this year, we can probably get a similar guy to replace him. Mm-hmm. Less money. Yeah, I would agree. Um, yeah, I don't know what it's like, what's going to happen there. I just think it's pretty clear that they need to just kind of get some more pieces into that room. Like, um, I don't personally think. Like everyone says that Green Bay needs or Green Bay's biggest weakness is receivers. I don't think that we necessarily need a receiver this year. I'm think this is more of a long term move. I think, you know, down the road this year, I think we're fine. I don't we don't need a receiver. We had the number one offense last year and we got all our receivers back. I think we're fine. Um, but thinking down the road, I think I really like the the prospects of this guy, you know. Spend a year to like polish his route running probably a little bit more. Um get those intermediate throws and yeah, I liked them a lot. Uh, so yeah, moving I mean, on to I mean, no matter what we're, I think we're, we're either losing Devonte Adams or losing 
uh, MVS. It, I don't yeah. think be able to afford both of them. Because uh, I, I sincerely believe MBS is going to break out this year. Like, if we don't sign him soon, he's going to be expensive, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, so if we're losing somebody, somebody that's a big part of this offense, uh, yeah, if you take a receiver this year, they might not do a whole lot this year. They're going to Prob- play next year. Probably be our wide receiver four this year if we take him. So unless you take a receiver in round one and then they probably become, you know, you know, the starting, you know, X receiver. They, and yeah, they better become the number two if you take. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my fifth round pick is a, uh, is a local boy uh, to me is uh trail Williams, uh, the cornerback out of Syracuse, uh, actually the cornerback two out of Syracuse. Um, Syracuse has had, has a, amazing secondary by the way they're they're looking at having three defensive backs uh, drafted in the draft this year um this was their number two corner though and he plays a lot like kevin king uh he's 6'2 198 uh he's a physical corner great size great speed um got good length uh he's good on presses um I mean, his hips aren't that great. I mean, he's a fifth round pick. There's going to be a lot of knocks on him at this point. You know, he's not super smooth and turning his hips and um, staying with, like, he can stay with receivers from his size, but he can, he doesn't got that quick first twitch type thing. Um, I liked him a lot, though. I think for a fifth round pick, he could turn in. He, I mean, he, his max would be like a starting cornerback to Kevin King. Like, but if you can get a, CB2 out of a round five cornerback, then yeah, all right, that's, pre- that's pretty successful, I think. So I like yeah. this tape. Yeah. I've, I've heard good things about him. And, and you know, honestly, if if we are going to be relying a little more on zone uh, for the most part, um, the, the hip fluidity, that doesn't concern me as much as if we were a heavy man scheme. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, for a fifth rounder, I'd be all over this. Uh, I love this guy a lot, by the way. Uh, we go back um, and add another receiver for the future, and we get Trevin Grimes. Um, it's a wide receiver out of Florida. He's 6'3", uh, ran a 4.4, 4.540. Um, I mean, he's a... Uh, what I liked is he's good in traffic. He always comes down with like, you can kind of lob it up there to him and he comes down with it a lot. Um, and he's an effective blocker down the field. He's another good corner bat, or not corner wide receiver that can block. Um, he's just a gritty, aggressive, uh, just good receiver. I think like if finding him at this point in the draft could be like, this guy could be like a M- MBS fine for us. You know, because MVS is like around five six. This guy could be like our next MVS. So, yeah, yeah. I was actually reading up on him just earlier today. Um, and what I was reading, uh, real good red zone threat, mm-hmm. um, elite physical capabilities, uh, but just kind of never put it together yeah. to, to really have production. Um. So, you know, there's, there's two ways to look at that. It's like, one, if you surround him with better talent, maybe he does step it up and put it together. Or two, you know, maybe he just doesn't have the dedication to that's required. Uh, but when you're looking in the sixth round, you got to roll the dice. Yeah. Um, my, my only holdup is I think – I do think the Packers are going to try to take two wide receivers uh, given the contractual situation going mm-hmm. forward. But I also – I'm trying to think of how the depth chart breaks down and, you know, who you're cutting, uh, where these guys slot onto the depth chart. And I I don't think the Packers are going to take two – like, yes, they, they, they like big, strong, fast receivers who can block. I don't think they're going to take two of that same type, though, just because of the way the depth chart is going to shake out. Well, like I think I think it would be incredibly hard to justify having five or six of the exact same type on the roster. I I do kind of think they're gonna they're gonna take one big guy with the intention of him being like a legit boundary receiver in mm-hmm. the future, and then I think they might try to take one of the smaller slot guys 
um, which they value less. So, so maybe they'll do that later. But I just, I, I do think they want different body types if they're taken too. Yeah. So if we, if they go with, I, I can see that I have some names of some smaller receivers um, that were on my board that I'm that passed the eye test for me and I really liked um, could be hopefully on package. I, I have them at the end of the draft on some late round targets apart from my picks. So I'll just wait till then to do it because we're pretty close to the end here. But um, my second to last pick um, is a we beef up our defense line with a with a more beefier lineman uh, just to add some more like, you know, mass to that line there. Uh, it sorely needs it. It's pretty much just Kenny Clark, you know, and company. Like at this point, there's like no one else there unless you want really count like Lancaster and stuff like. So there's Stills, um, big, powerful kid, um, really raw, but he's got the intangibles. He's got the traits. He's got like, like, he's got things that you can't coach. You know, the the speed, uh, the power, uh, the height. Um, he just needs Look, more, more refinement. Guy, just like his, the way he looks in this picture <laughs> yeah. and, and then looking at, uh, the height and weight ratio there, uh, I'm getting Mike Daniels vibes. Yeah. I actually, when I was looking up is like, uh, if you go off like, like, like big boards, like PFS big boards or bleach reports, big boards, he's actually ranked lower than 220 than, than 220. Um, like. I, th- I think the one I was, uh, that I was looking at for reference was like 226 or something like that. And I'm like, man, how is this kid? Like, I'm looking at all these other guys that they have ranked higher than him. I was like, heck no, I'm taking, I want, I want this guy. I don't want these other tweeners. Like these tweeners are like, you know, like 245 and they're trying to play defensive line. I'm stuff curious, like, get- do, you, do you have any tape that you can bring up on him right now? Yeah, I can bring him up. Cause, cause this is one guy I, I actually have not heard his name at all in, in there's not case. a lot on him either if you if you try to if you try to look it up uh here for a uh on a draft profile so i will read before i we watch the tape i will read you a little bit about his uh um bio he's a his ideal role is as a rotational three technique that could develop into a starter man if you can get anyone that could develop into a starter around you know round six that's Amazing. Uh, scheme fit used mostly as a penetrating three technique that's able to create vertical push and disruption. Yeah, Green Bay needs a penetrating three three technique. That's exactly what they need. Um, so Darius Stills is a quick mover off the snap. He uses his natural leverage to his advantage by remaining low, which helps him win quickly in a multitude of ways. He has overwhelming hand strength and power at the point of attack. He plays very aggressively and he is not shy with using them quickly. Few matches suddenness and play violence off the line, which are the main culprits of how he experiences so much success. He's a consistent pressure generator. He can disrupt pockets with straight ahead rushing attacks, and he gets home on twists and stunts as the looper. He has a motor that constantly runs hot, even as an interior rusher. He has everything you're saying. I'm just thinking much. Yeah. (laughs) He has outside of the tackle box range and a ball of in a range of of in ball pursuit when chasing down plays. However, he is very undisciplined in his approach as a run defender. He will do many outlandish moves in order to try to create penetration, but in turn, it leaves his gap voided for gaping running lanes for ball carriers. Stills is a true up the field penetrator that doesn't yet understand the meaning and discipline behind run fits. So he needs coaching. He needs to understand gap fits and he needs to not just do like when he's trying to like, you know, get to the quarterback. He just needs to like develop some solid pass rush moves and do it. But he's got, you know, he's got the motor. He's got the power. Like that's what I want at that point. Coach him up. Yeah, we'll watch a little bit of tape on him. Um, uh, new share. Can you see it? Appropriately, obviously a tough loss okay. for New England. Charlie Brewer under pressure. He'll be sacked. Came in like a bowl out of China Shaft right there. Holy cow. Jerry Portlet got through, helped out by Darius Stills. I can't believe he's ranked this low. I don't think he's going to go this low in the draft, but maybe. <laughs> the music on this. <laughs> oh, is there music? I can't hear I can't hear music on my hands. Oh, you can't? No. It's a great. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, 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 I got no sound. I can just hear you. I could try to sing along. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> All right, let's go. The ball's got to get outside the numbers. Incompletions are okay. Six, You've got to conserve six, as much time as possible. He is in the middle. Wow. Holy oh, cow. He made that start to the outside, and they had the speed to still get to the quarterback. Yeah, that does so nice. He's a big boy. He's, he's, he's 280 pounds, I think. He's not supposed to be that fast. Trust your eyes. Love it. Quite the height. Behind the line. <laughs> I wish I could hear the music. I'm going to have to listen to it after this. Uh, after this, video those over. Two combined this isn't the video I watched of him. This is, I mean, there, I, I've already seen one play that's... It's similar. So he is. He's in the middle again. Man, I like it. I like it though. Yeah. So it's just one of the things. Like when it works, it works, and probably when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So it looks like his issue is just that he cares so much about getting to the quarterback that he probably just you know leaves you know big big running lanes um, for the running backs. So yeah. Uh, if, he, if that's his knock on him falling to the end of the sixth round, uh, please scoop him up, Green Bay. I like to get Yeah, <laughs> and have big boys make diving interceptions like that. Go for it. Go for it. Got it. Got it like 280. Yeah. Yeah, like a defensive lineman in the NFL, you're probably not making a lot of interceptions, but you can bat passes down. Uh, you, you can jump on fumbles. Like seeing ball awareness like that, I, I definitely like that. Yeah, so I, I mean, I was, when I was looking at Ed and seeing where his, like, draft projection is and seeing that he's, like, you know, round six, round seven, I'm like, this kid fits a need, and I see a lot of upside with him. So, that's, I hope that's our round six pick. Um, perhaps my favorite pick, though, is our round seven pick. Uh, Cole Van Landing, which some have him as an undrafted um, pick this year, basically because he hasn't played in the last two seasons uh, due to like some injuries. Um, and I think he might have opted out this last year, but when he did play, he was looking like he was going to be a day one pick, like literally first round draft pick. Um, I mean, I think the knock on him is just that like, no one's really seen him play for a while. So why not take a potential first round pick or talent in the seventh round at pick 256, which is like one of the last picks. Yeah, uh, and even better, he's homegrown. He literally played high school football in Green Bay and went to college in Wisconsin. So uh, I will say the yeah. picture you selected, I, I don't like his technique against Chase Young there. <laughs> well, but... the fact that he is playing against Chase Young and yeah. guarding him, there you go. Yeah, no, I mean, seventh grounder, um, you, yeah, it's – I, I I like the idea of rolling the dice on injury risks in mm -hmm. the seventh round because um, the alternative is taking guys who just – they're either so raw because they're new to the sport that, like, it's going to take three or four years to yeah. clean them, uh, or they're guys who just kind of lack the physical skills necessary. Yeah. And obviously there, there are plenty of guys who overcome – their limitations just the instinct alone um but you know it's uh if, if you're going in the seventh round I'd, I'd rather roll the dice for for a, a big boom kind of prospect yeah plus we get another you know add another big boy to that to those trenches you know so uh this is the end of my draft i just have some draft crushes the guys these are the players i was considering um, when I was making these picks who I just, you know, they just weren't the picks that I, I went with. However, these are players I would be perfectly fine with us drafting. Um, really like Terrence Marshall Jr., the wide receiver at LSU. Uh, round one, maybe round two if, he, if he's there, but it would have to be early in round two. Really like Tevin Jenkins, big old beast of a man. Um, I really like Tevin Jenkins. <laughs> yep. Uh, I mentioned – Elijah Vera Tucker earlier. I don't even think he gets to us. Um, I also mentioned Levi. Uh, 
O last name. I'm, I can't even say it, but. Um, On was a rookie. Yeah, there you go. Uh, really loved his tape. In fact, I it when we when I started this morning, I had him penciled in as our uh, first draft pick. Yeah, that's that's who I wanted. Uh, Liam Eichenberg. Uh, the reason I didn't go with it is because I just didn't like the by not taking a tackle or a cornerback until like round three. I didn't like the, the the round three prospects of having the cornerback or tackle there. But I could see it. Maybe Green Bay doesn't think cornerbacks that big of a, an issue. But I remember Joe Barry saying that he needs really good cornerbacks in his system. So that makes me feel like they're going to prioritize cornerback like early round one or two. So walk a litter. Walker Little, um, Walker Little could be the best tackle in this draft class. He just hasn't played a whole lot in the last like year and a half. Uh, I'm not going to say that. I can't even try to say that other Syracuse cornerback there, uh, Ibatu Melafenwu. Yeah, um, really love Javen Holland. Really love him a lot. Um, he's super fast. 4.240, I believe, and he's a hybrid. He can play cornerback and safety. He could be a big nickel. Uh, he's played everywhere. Uh, really, really like him. I just don't know where we would play him given our current um, – like, he would be, like, best player on the board there in, like, mid-second round if we're picking. I just don't know where we would play him unless we want to make him, like, the star nickel. Yeah, yeah, and that's interesting. I, I've looked at a couple of those kind of hybrid guys – um, in this draft and it, the thing about them is it, it's all about scheme fit like either mm -hmm. it, it, if you can scheme around them they can be stars but if you try to shove them into a traditional scheme they're going to be busts um, yeah. I don't know enough about Joe Barry yet to to know how he would handle a player like that um, so yeah that guys like that are a really tough call uh, my next guy I have is. Say, though, I will say, um, Maurice Jones Drew, uh, you know, all time great Jacksonville Jaguar running back. Uh, and actually, he was one of my favorite players to watch when he played. He actually got you a fancy championship, football. didn't you? I think he did, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I did see. Uh, so he works for NFL.com. Um, and he, he was doing some rankings of. Uh, well, actually, rather, it was a. They were polling like all the writers on the staff for who they thought the best defensive player in the draft would be. And most guys, they, they were picking um, people you would expect, uh, you know, like your, your Micah Parsons or, or your, uh, your Patrick Sertan, stuff like that. Um, but Maurice Jones Drew, he said Jevin Holland. Um, he saw him as being just an absolute ball hawk playmaker. Uh, and hey, Jones Drew had a, a very long NFL career, so I'm I'm gonna put some weight to what he says. Yeah, I mean he he caught he passed the eye test for me when I watched him. I I mean I really like him. I just we have two amazing safeties now. If Green Bay's true to to his board that they take best player available, and he's clearly the best player available, he just isn't gonna be a starter from day one. That means he's probably gonna like take over for like Adrian Amos or something like that. but we didn't. Yeah, and, and that, that is another thing to consider when you're looking at the cap situation next year. Uh, you know, Adrian Amos has really played well for us, um, but he could end up being a cap casualty uh, Maybe. if we found a replacement for him. Yeah. Uh, I, and I, I will also say I'm not opposed to taking a safety um, if they're a guy who can kind of – I, I think they could give us the flexibility to you, you either take a guy who can play that slot star role mm. or take a traditional deep fielder and you move uh, Darnell Savage into, into the star role. Cause I yeah. think he can handle it. I think that I'm like, that could be an option that do just try to get your best players on the field type thing. Yeah. Uh, Davion Nixon really stood out to me as well. My notes on him was that he's, he's raw, but he has elite upside uh, he does need to add a little bit more bulk, but even as current frame, he just continuously or consistently collapses the pocket like all the time. Um, so liked his tape a lot and Osa Adigizua. He was a lot like Nixon. And then here's my last slide. These are my day three draft crushes. And this is where the receivers kind of pop out. Um, 
I did I did like Peyton Turner. He was another edge. Rico Busi, Anthony Schwartz, and Dwayne Eskridge. I really liked Anthony Schwartz. I think he probably goes day two, though. Um, Schwartz and Eskridge are um, gadget players. Really small, 5'9", five, 5'10", five, blazing fast speed. We're talking like Tyreek Hill type speed. Um, but they're basically those players that you get the ball in their hands and you just let them work. Uh, you just try to find a way. Really like those players. Um, so there's going back to what we talked about earlier where you think Green Bay might take like a slot guy. Those would be my picks on who I would want is uh, Schwartz or Eskridge. Um, and and uh, see me uh, Fajeko there. Um, you know, if we're looking at the big guys, uh, yeah, I, he's, he's a big, I've he's seen a, a lot of one. good from him as, in terms of, you know, being that big, strong, uh, fast blocking receiver. Um, so definitely another mid round option there. Um, Mark Gilbert, um, my notes on him is he, he has, he's an elite prospect, elite skills um, across the board. He's just been devastated with injuries, like back to back, pretty bad injuries in the last two years. Hasn't played in two years. He's a lot like, uh, Cole Van Landon. He's, he's, he's going to be a day three pick who could, you know, if he can ever overcome his injuries, he could, you know, be a day one talent that you find on day three. Um, or he could just let his in- injuries continuously nag him through his whole career and never really do anything. So he was a uh, he caught my eye. Marco Wilson, Malcolm Kuntz, an edge out of Buffalo, and Spencer Brown. Spencer Brown really caught my eye. He is another one who has elite, elite um, talent. My notes on him were, uh, yeah, that he's just raw, but he has elite physical talent. He's not going to come in and start for you soon but if you can if you can coach him up yeah he can be a really solid starter for you probably what school did spencer brown play at because i i have seen his name come up alabama no are you you yeah uab uab alabama okay yeah i've I've seen his name come up pretty frequently in the like uh round like four you know yeah like Roughly around four range, you know, three to five, kind of. Um, so, you know, if we pass on tackle early, I could went to Northern play. Iowa. My bad. Northern, Northern Iowa. Iowa. He's six, eight and a half. He's 311 pounds. Dang. Uh, his, his positives are he's a massive right task tackle prospect with starting potential at the next level. He fires off the snap. He shows explosiveness at the point, and he effectively blocks with leverage for a taller lineman. He plays with a nasty attitude. He displays strength, and he, and he easily turns defenders off the line, gets his hands into opponents, steers them from the action, and controls defenders once engaged at the point. He makes outstanding use of blocking anger, a- angles, and he anchors in pass protection, keeps his feet moving, always keeps his head on a swivel, and he looks for someone to hit. He quickly recognizes assignments and works well with line mates. His negatives are he just lacks quick and fluid footwork off the edge, He struggles adjusting in motion, and he lacks lateral blocking range, and he struggled during the senior role practices. Uh, Analysis were that he looked terrific in 2019 before opting out last season, and then he had issues at senior bowl. Um, He just needs – he he comes with terrific upside, and if he can ever get his game back to where it was in 2019 and then develops from there, he could eventually break into a starting NFL lineup. So, I mean – yeah, on a day three pick, really like, you know, yeah. what he could offer. So, sounds like a guy who's probably never going to be elite uh, if, if he just – he kind of lacks the ability – Serviceable. – to handle those – the speed rushers. Uh, yeah. But but also sounds like a guy who could develop into a starter. Yeah, and I'd be cool with that. So uh, that concludes it for my PowerPoint here uh, on my picks. So at this point, we'll probably switch over and do uh, – um, do our uh, do a, do a mock draft thing here, yeah. Time mock draft. So we'll um, put it put it into motion here. Well, actually, so uh, first I just I want to thank you for going through uh and doing such a detailed, thorough <laughs> mock draft there. Um, you know, you working up the trades, uh, watching the tape. Um, it, it's great to get an in depth analysis on on those late round guys. You know, everyone knows the first rounders. I like hearing about those fourth and fifth and sixth rounders 
Yeah, I like to learn about them too because now I just feel like I'm more invested. And like, if I hear one of these players' names on day three, I actually like know something. You know, like, like yeah, I like, I really like, like that guy, Stape and shit. So. All right, baby. So before we start this seven round Green Bay Packers mock draft up, um, what do you say we take a quick pee break? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. We'll do a quick pause share then. recording all right and through the miracle of video editing or zoom pause we are we're back and uh we're gonna start this hackers oriented um mock draft simulator so seven rounds uh draft speed will be fast we'll go back and kind of review some of the um players taken when it's our turn uh, and I, I will say, just for the purposes of simplicity here, I think we should probably uh, not do any trades. Yeah, we'll just reject them all, even though, yeah, that one, I want to take that one anyway. Uh, I, I won't trade with the Minnesota Vikings, even if it's a good trade anyway. And uh, I'm not helping the Kansas City Chiefs win another Super Bowl. All right, so who do we got taken off here? So the top 10 is probably going to always be pretty similar uh Rayshon Slater go, go back I want to see who Detroit picked here uh Detroit took Devonta Smith Devonta Smith okay okay decent pick for them yeah um I personally I sense. think I think they're gonna go with uh Micah Parsons I, I think he will set the attitude that their new head coach Dan Campbell wants yeah I actually like that in fact I don't see Micah Parsons yet. Uh I went to the Miami 18. Man, if, if Miami can get Micah Parsons at 18, that'd be uh that'd be a hell of a what's surprising is uh Tampa traded up to 17 to take Najee Harris, a running back out of Alabama. Ooh, yeah, that that seems way off. But... Uh Chicago <laughs> taking a quarterback. Ah, uh, poor Mac Jones. I'm sorry, so, buddy. So actually, I, I will I want to comment on Chicago real quick here because I, I feel like it's popular um, to mock quarterbacks to Chicago, I don't see it happening. Like, yeah, maybe if they could get a top three quarterback or, or mm-hmm. maybe even top four. Um, but someone like Mac Jones uh, and like Trey Lance is like a stretch as well. They're not going to help them win this year. If they don't win this year, mm-hmm. Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy are fired. Um, yeah. I think they're going to go for the biggest impact player they can get this year. Would not surprise me if they roll the dice on someone like Caleb Farley, um, you know, the who was kind of like so, cornerback one before his back surgery. Yeah, I was going to mention that. He's on this board, and he is someone that I was thinking about in my personal mock, but I really didn't want to do it because I didn't think that he was going to be there for us. But I have seen that he had minor back surgery and he's fallen. Do you just jump all over Caleb Farney if you're Green Bay at 29 and he's there? All right, well, I mean, let's so let's talk about it right now. You, he's you there. Me, we're in the war room, and and it's time to pick. Uh, if, so I'm looking at this list right now. The two names that immediately jump out to me are Caleb Farley and Tevin Jenkins. Um, I, I don't know if you want to scroll down a little bit, see if maybe there's anyone else on there. Uh, um, that, one name that I don't see is – um, Asante Samuel Jr. He's he hasn't been taken yet, and I don't see him. How far? Yeah, do, oh, they better. haven't they haven't done it fifty two. On this, yeah, I oh, mean, wow. I've, I've seen a lot of a lot of people ranking him as a second rounder, but then there are also people who rank him as a first. I, I would say I think there's a clear cut division and talent between him and Caleb Farley. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the knock on Farley is like a lot of you know scouts, or whatever, saying that like there's no such thing as minor back surgery. Once once you start having back problems, you you're always gonna have back problems, and this won't be his only back surgery he's had. Not yeah. really what you want to take. However, he was like pretty much you know like just a couple months ago he was the clear cut number one cornerback in this draft, and here he is sitting at 31. Do you go with a premier talent like that with injury history? Maybe messing with another Justin Harrell situation for us? Or do you go with someone like a Tevin Jenkins or uh, 
or even like I, I mean, a Zayvon Collins. He, he's there's got, the there's that defensive tackle I was thinking about taking uh, on on Muz- Zurique or whatever. I I like I like uh, on Muzurike. Um, I don't know if I'd take him at 29 though. I I would feel more comfortable with a trade back. Uh, but that does raise one question. Can you go through the the picks again real quick and see? Yeah. Did Christian Barrymore get taken? Yeah, he went to New England at oh, 15. Patriots. Okay, that's actually a very Patriots pick right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, Vikings took Christian Derrissaw to solidify the offensive line. That makes sense. All right, Greg. man. So I'm looking at this board. And my thought process is uh, we have a very conservative medical staff, but we are also in the last years of the Aaron Rodgers era, Uh, perhaps the last year. You know, we don't know. We know for sure we have this year. Maybe we get two years. Um, And I'm looking at a guy who, like, before this injury, you were talking a top 10 pick. We have a need at cornerback presently and in the future. Mm-hmm. I think we go Caleb Farley here. What, what do you think? Um, I think that this draft is going to be when by the time these players, you know, are you know, a few years into the league and, like, you really start assessing them. This is going to be a draft that really, like, makes or breaks. Um, this is a real, like, the most important draft, I feel like, of, of Goot's career um, because this is going to be the players who are going to hopefully be the impact players when Jordan Love takes over and Rodgers is gone. Um, so he needs these players to, like, pan out and help out his new quarterback. For that reason, I – if there's any injury concerns, especially with a round one pick, I don't, I don't think Goot takes Farley. I love him. I mean, I'm cool with taking him, but I don't think Goot takes him just because of the importance of this draft. I think he plays it safe. I think, right. I think he would so, take like a Tevin Jenkins. All right. So my, I want to counter on this here. Um, Cause I mean, I can definitely see the, the thinking there with, with Gutekunst wanting to, <laughs> quarterback and and wanting to avoid an injury bust uh but but i'm going to counter by saying uh if you scroll down that player list i think we're going to see a lot of viable offensive line prospects later on um i think top tier cornerbacks are going to dry up faster particularly a guy who was like literally was like top 10 before this uh, injury, mm-hmm. which by all accounts, he is healing from well and should be ready for training camp. Uh, the concern is more, will it recur throughout his career? All right, all right let's do it then. Do hey, it. welcome to Green Bay. Welcome to Green Bay, Caleb Farley. All right, baby. All right, we are back on the board. Wow, Rondell Moore went 60. Elijah Moore went 61. Yeah, let's let's go back to the second round picks here real quick. And I'm just, I'm interested looking at those Saints picks. In first round, they took uh, Travis Etienne or whatever. Yeah. And then they took Rondell Moore. It's like they're reloading on offense and getting prepared to uh to not. Well, actually, have they given Kamara a second contract? Yes. Yeah, they, they have. Did? Okay. Yep. All right. That's all right. That's just a bad pick by the simulator. So, that... See, so this Tevin... is why I don't like simulators. They're not. Sometimes they make wacky picks. Well, who knows? Uh, the Saints do like their two running back systems, so maybe. I mean, we had Aaron Jones, and we took uh, we took um, AJ Dillon. Yeah. AJ Dillon second round, so I mean, it's not out of question. Dude, that's uh, kind of interesting. There at uh, end of the first, they have the Raiders trading up for Tevin Jenkins. Uh, I'm sure the Raiders would well, love to. Get I that. think this was the trade with the Bucks. Because the Bucks moved up to take the Alabama right. running back, right, um, right. so let's see what else we got. We got Zayvon Collins, Asante Samuel, Samuel goes. goes to the Falcons. Man, actually, that's a, that's a pretty good move. Asante Samuel going to the Falcons. Um, the cornerback out Syracuse going to Tennessee. Uh, Dylan Redunds was another player I have seen. Uh, Detroit gets my 
gets my defensive tackle. This was a guy I, I had high on my list, too, if, if we're going to go edge early, is uh, Greg Rousseau. I know he's kind of up there. There's Tudin goes to Dallas. Oh, wow, um, dude. That would make that Dallas receiving corps just loaded. Man, that's crazy. I don't know. I don't see them doing that. But maybe because uh, what's-his-face is pretty much gone after this year. Probably oh, um, Michael Gallup. Yeah, Gallup. So, yeah, if you want to keep those three receiver sets, sure. Jalen Phillips is another nasty edge that I can see making an impact. Yeah. Uh, I'm he's actually, I'm surprised Patriots. with this draft, a lot of uh, of the higher-ranked edge guys are falling. Yeah. Um, uh, Bears taking Calvin Joseph there. Um, raw guy, but elite skills. Uh, he, he could turn out to be a good one. Eric Stokes, the guy who I also had pegged to go – um, and one of my mocks goes to Arizona. Uh, Peyton Turner, who I did not have, I didn't think that he was going to be taken in the second round. Is does go in the second round here. I saw him as, I think I said if if he fell, he would be an intriguing prospect, but not to reach on him. So, wow, um, Terrence Marshall Jr. lasting until pick fifty three. So I will say this: if if a guy like Terrence Marshall Jr. and what I've seen uh, his tape and read on him, if he's if he's Still on the board at like 50. Man, it's not that too far off. It's 12 picks away in a second round. Go fucking get him. Go, like, we're going to take receivers later on draft. I mean, that's a guy who has potential to be a wide receiver one. So, I, I mean, I just think it's crazy. Uh, Eichenberg uh, goes 57. We're on I, the board I, now. I would move up five spots for Eichenberg. Like, I, I would be all over that. Well, I do see that. So my second round pick, uh, Mayfield's still on the board here. Uh, what do they say about Mayfield on this? I'm, I'm just curious. So he's a large left tackle with the potential to line up on the left or right side. He starts with a wide base. He bends his knees and keeps his head on a swivel. He possesses outstanding blocking vision. He moves well on his feet and plays technically sound football. He makes good use of angles, blocks with leverage, and squares into opponents, riding them into their angles of attack. Strong anchors and pass protection and seals defenders from the action. Keeps his feet moving and displays solid footwork in space. He's explosive and shows the ability to adjust and redirect. Correctly places his hands into opponents and rides them from their angles of attack. Then blocks down well and engulfs opponents. It's a lot of good positives. Yeah, sounds like a technician. <laughs> Negatives. Not a lineman who gets a lot of movement run blocking. Late with his hands on occasion has a limited body of work at the college level. Sounds like coaching stuff to me. That's it. I was negatives, man. That's it. Uh, analysis. Mayfield was dominant at times the past two seasons as both a pass protector and a run blocker. He has large upside and is versatile, but Mayfield's inexperience likely means bumps in the road early in his NFL career. Yeah, that's pretty much a lot of what I saw on the tape, man. He's He's got elite upside. Uh, he just needs some coaching, I feel. I mean... A little raw, but he's got all the things you need, and he does a lot of good things already for coming out of college. So uh, that's what sold me on him. I'm not saying we got to go with him, but we do need a tackle. Well, so I, I will say that obviously tackle is a more premium position than guard or center. But we do have a big old void at center after Corey Lindsley leaves and, and we're looking at either moving Lucas Patrick or Elkin Jenkins there. Um, if you look at that board there, one of the top trank guys is Landon Dickerson. Dickerson. And, and, and many yeah. people will see him as a first round pick as one of the safest offensive line picks in the draft. Um, you know, he, he had a torn ACL that he's recovering from, uh, but people look at this guy as a 10 year starter. Um, so <laughs> here's, I mean, could be, but if these negatives, I mean, this is one guy's opinion, but if these negatives are true, I don't think Green Bay pulls the trigger on this. You know, Green Bay likes to pull those centers and get them up to the second level and, you know, do pulls to the yeah. outside. Yeah. Heavy footed, moving around the field, and he's not effective at the second level, and he can't slide in space. I am, okay, so he sounds like more of a power center than a than, uh... Than an and, agile, and one. that's not Green Bay's game. They like yeah. those. They like those centers to pull. Um, well, so let, let's take a look. Who else is on the board right now? Uh, so let me go to all. Uh, Jay uh, Tufelli, Tufelli, yeah. 
the USC defensive tackle. Um, I've heard good things about him, kind of a penetrator uh, who, who has good size. Um, you know, that, that could potentially be an option to, you know, you go cornerback, defensive tackle, and really start to shore up this defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Tufele or Milton Williams, I did like to tape on Tufele more. Um, I'd be fine with that. Um, but I, w- I will say Amon Ross, St. Brown, um, he's got, like, wide receiver one, Billy, written all over him. But I did read that he, like, literally doesn't even care about pass blocking or run blocking. Like, he just, I'm- like... I'm going to we'll say that the Packers avoid him based solely on uh, – he's the brother of Equimania St. Brown, and we've had some time to to see EQ, and I don't know, man. He hasn't put together enough work to crack the lineup yet. And you got to think work ethic is something that's going to be similar in family lines. I don't know if we bite on on his brother. Um, well, you want so you want to, you want to wait another round on getting this tackle and try to beef well, up this so, line some so more. So let's. I, I want to look down further and, and see who's going to be available uh, further down. Uh, because um, I mean, defensive tackle we know is pretty weak in this draft. If we don't we can, take it now, we're probably not getting it. We can Walker hope that Walker Little, Little could be there. Um, so our next pick is going to be 92. He's going to be within 10 spots it's if the board stays true. Gamble. Um, after that, we're looking at um, – I don't – I didn't really like tape, tape on – I mean, Carmen Jackson was okay. I actually don't – didn't see too much on Dante Smith that jumped out to me. Well, um, so, so let me throw one scenario by you because as I've done mock drafts, one of the things I've considered is uh, Elkin Jenkins has proven that he can play right tackle. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he doesn't have a huge sample size, but every time he's been out there, he's played really well. And, and he's just, he's so versatile. He's such a good player. I, I think he could play at right tackle. We could also have John Runyon compete with him because John Runyon, was a right tackle at Michigan. Um, so if we look at it like we don't have to take a tackle, but we have to take offensive line, we might find some value on the interior line later on, uh, and, and we can move Jenkins uh, or Runyon and then try to fill it, plug the interior with a later round guy. Um, so I feel like that's one thing to consider, uh, but offensive tackle is definitely an elite position, you know, very important. So you, you want to make sure you have a good player there. So I don't we, know, man, what, what are you thinking, are looking, Lo- looking at this board? So there are some guys that I do like later on down there, like, holy cow, they got Osa Odigizua ranked 139th on this board. Um Wow, they, okay, they got Darius Stills ranked a lot higher than some of the other big boards I've seen. He's up at 179. Um, yeah, I mean, hey, you watch tape on Stills. I'm I'm cool with Osa Digizua too. I mean, we could double down in rounds, you know, like four or five and grab some of these guys. Tyler yeah. Shelvin, we can finally get that big old nose tackle that, that we personally want, but um, – yeah, I'm, and and also we we do want to consider that you know even if you're looking at a, a top defensive lineman, it, it's incredibly rare for them to have big contributions in year one. So mm-hmm. you know may, maybe there's not a huge difference between taking a second rounder or a fourth rounder. By the way, um, also if you want Javon Holland, he's not going to last to our to our next pick either. By the way. Yeah, man, but I feel like we we. With our first pick, we took an elite secondary prospect. I, I don't feel as much pressure to do more picks there, which I mean, like we certainly probably could use them, you know, and y- use a guy like Holland in the star role. But, but I, I feel like right now after taking Caleb Farley, I think we've got more pressing needs. Um, 
Uh, so my pick is either a defensive tackle or a tackle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you go back up to all? I, I want to see the whole board. There you go. Um, yeah, man, I guess uh, if if you're comfortable with Mayfield, I'm comfortable with Mayfield. Welcome to Green Bay, Mayfield. Uh, no. All right. Who we got now? Walker well, Little. On, on. Let's, let's just check out some of the oh. highlights of. By the way, Walker Little did fall to 92. No shit, dude. I almost want to gobble him up, actually. I, like, I know hey, taking two could, tackles in a row. No, it's not a bad idea because we could always kick one to guard and they'd be probably freaking elite at guard and they could fill in for uh Bakhtiari who's gonna miss most of the season this year too. Not that that should be like a big decision why you draft someone in the third round, but yeah. All right. So Jay Tufelli went two picks later. Um Brady Chris Christensen went to the Jets. Sucks for your loss. Um let's see Milton Williams went to the Broncos. Landon Troy Dickerson went to the Michelle. Um, Nick Bolton to the Ravens. That, that seems like a solid Ravens pick there. Josh Myers went to the Raiders. Amon St. Ra went to the Raiders. Oh, so that's Tyson a player Campbell that to the Dolphins. So that's a player who's been falling a lot. Like uh, I think I mentioned to you a couple months ago that I was in love with Tyson Campbell. I saw Jerry Alexander like written too. all over him. I. I thought he was going to be a borderline, like late round one, early round two pick. He's fallen to the to the third round here. Um, I'm not sure. I didn't see what his pro day was or something like that, but um, I'm gonna to have to look into that and see why he's fallen. Oh, Nico Collins uh, went to the Rams. That could be dirty. Um, damn, you, like you should watch some tape on Nico Collins some sometime. You're 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 gonna fall in love with him too. Um. So, right, yeah, well, that let's, leaves let's us. Let's check out the board. Who do we – right now you're specifically on offensive tackle. So, Javon Ooh, Holland, Holland is there. Available. Walker Little. Dylan Moses, the linebacker from Alabama. Uh, that was – actually, I don't know if you noticed, I didn't really take a linebacker. I, I wanted to, but it just didn't fall that way. Um, There's one there. Who else we got in here? Hey, you want to take Davis Mills, the quarterback that uh, Lafleur is in love with, supposedly? We ain't touching a QB, okay? We, we can take him that. in the top 100, man. Um, actually, so there's a lot of nice talent available at this point in the draft right now. Paul Smadivo, Chaz um, Surratt was a guy I, I I had my eye on. He's an athletic freak for linebacker. Um. So he he sounds a lot like actually to be honest with you he sounds a lot like um who's our safety that we converted the linebacker that never worked out in our special uh no the we took him in the third round like two years ago oh Warren Burks yeah he sounds a lot like Warren Burks on his athleticism to be honest with you so um yeah I don't know if I want to be going down this far on this at the wall top. Tyler well, there yeah, I, I mean, I think I think a lot of the guys you're looking at right now, we got a shot in the fourth. So let's go back up to the top there. Um, we do have uh, Tommy Togai, uh, defensive tackle from Ohio State. Yeah, yep. Um, I don't like those negatives, though. Lax, bulk. I mean, he could always just, just tell him to eat. Gets, however, I don't like the gets tied up and blocks too often. That kills me. I don't like guys that can't disengage from blocks. Green Bay loves to try to take dudes who they, they think they can coach out of that, and it doesn't work like Oren Burks. Oren Burks could never get, get off blocks, and that's why he can't be a good pro. Um, All right, man. So so I'm looking at this board right now. It, and, dude, honestly, Walker Little is so attractive. But we just took an offensive tackle. And we took three offensive linemen last year in the later rounds. I, I'm, 
I don't know that we have the depth chart space for all these offensive linemen. So I look up to Jevin Holland, and I think, hey, Adrian Amos has a pretty expensive contract um, a year from now. Maybe Holland can be that star role and then take over for safety a year later. Yeah, and if we take Holland right now, we're pretty much done with our secondary for this draft. We can focus on all the other positions. So I'm cool with it. I think I think if you can get a guy like Holland at the end of the third round, it's probably a pretty good value. What college did Holland go to? Um, Oregon. And didn't Goot go to Oregon's pro er, thing not too long ago? He did. Could be taking a good hard look at. At, oh, uh, there's uh, there's your um, boy Deo, uh, blah, 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 uh, going to the Steelers there at 1:30. Oh yeah, man, that was close. He almost fell. I well, I have Green Bay taking him in the third round. So who else? We got Kyle Trask going to Minnesota. <laughs> Probably a decent. I don't think him, I don't think Trask lasts the fourth round. To be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, Jamie and Sherwood Wood was another safety I had an eye on that I wrote down. Um, safety at Auburn. Trill Williams goes to the Patriots. It's a good pickup for them. Paul um, Debo to the Niners. I love this guy's name, Hamilcar Rashid Jr. Like <laughs> I, 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 I just want to call him Race Car. Um, uh, Lions pick up Tony Fields the second. Uh, let's see. Uh, Amir Smith Marsat was a receiver I had listed on my PowerPoint as a guy I was I really liked. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of I'm at the point where I'm starting to get a little worried about finding a receiver who could potentially contribute a year from now, but I also don't want to like push the value and and overreach. Nico Collins won already, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, he went to the Rams a uh, yeah. few picks before our third rounder. So Anthony Schwartz is on the board. He was a guy I liked. He's he's a burner really fast. Um, game breaking receiver with home run hitting speed. Immediately gets the top speed. Plays to his forty time and beats opponents downfield in foot races. Extends his hands, locks the ball, and makes the reception away from his frame. Displays the ability to make the difficult over the shoulder reception downfield. He's a solid route runner. Fires in the breaks and stays low on exit to separate from opponents. Um, negatives, he's not a big frame receiver and gets easily brought down at the point by a single defender. Double catches, too many throws. I don't know what double catch means. What's a double catch? I think probably just not not like latching out and grabbing at the point of attack. Something Struggles like to find the ball in the air at times. Um, I mean, he just sounds like a big, like basically a home run threat. Um, I think he's, I think he's short. He's a shorter guy. Uh, as for receivers, where uh, have you? I mean, I've oh, Austin Watkins was a guy who was kind of intriguing. Yeah, I've heard some things about Watkins, K. Johnson, Josh Palmer. He um, ran exceptional routes to separate from opponents during senior bowl practices. So he's playing against some pretty good corners. At senior bowling is you know, separating from them. Um. He's not a vertical threat. Inconsistent running routes through his college career. Um, I mean, well, let, here let's let's take a look at the overall board right now and see who we're looking at value wise. Um, man, and remember when like I'm, Sean Wade, he was like he just continues to fall in drafts. I remember like back in the fall, Sean Wade was like a first round draft pick prospect. What uh, what does the site have to say about him? I don't know much about Sean Wade. He's a physically talented quarterback who shows a physical nature to his game, mixes it up with receivers, and stays on the opponent. We're not taking a receiver or a cornerback, by the way. Um, effectively brackets receivers over the middle of the field with safeties, displays a crossing burst. Um, do, 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 do. Negatives. Shows a lot of hesitation in his game, played with a nonchalant attitude last year, seemed as though he was going half speed and gave up on plays rather easily. Inefficient and takes too many steps to get into action. Analysis. When breaking down weight, I saw two players on film. The first was a potentially dominant cornerback with the ability to shut down opponents with physicality as well as ball skills. 
the other prospect and the one most prominent last year played like an undrafted free agent that looked like he'd rather be elsewhere than on the football field. Yeah, Goot's not going to take him. He because the you know say all the time they're like they we want guys that love to play football, like they they won't like this guy's off their draft board. Um, oh hey hey, uh, so I'm just I'm checking out the board right now. One name that just jumped out to me, uh, Osa. Oh yeah, uh, I was hoping you're going to say him. I'm all for that. We haven't taken a D lineman yet, have we? We have not. Uh, that the I guess the only other pick that's jumping out right away from what I can see is uh, I don't know much about that Seth Williams receiver from Auburn. Maybe we could get a quick uh, rundown on him. Sure. On that, well, the answer was Williams was the go-to guy at Auburn in the past two seasons and showed consistent improvement in his game. He's a solid possession receiver who will be a good red zone threat, but his inability to separate through routes or speed limits. Him. I, I, I don't need a guy like that. You can get someone like that in the sixth round. Uh, yeah, man, I'm I'm kind of wondering about uh, Osa, the defensive tackle. Man, no, like I, I see Osa going in like the second round in some drafts. Like if he's there and what, are we in the third or fourth? fourth. We're in the fourth? fourth. Yeah, I'm off for Osa right now. I can't believe they even got him ranked at 139. Yeah, let's let's take a quick look at his uh, description just so we can get the details here. Uh, he was an explosive defensive lineman for the Bruins. He may not have a true position at the next level. He could project as a three-technique tackle or defensive end in a four-man front, although he'll have to improve his strength at the point to develop into a starter on Sundays. All right, you just got to hit the weight room more, man. Yeah, man, that's something. You, these are young guys. They're still growing. You can develop strength. Yeah, so it's, it's like the only negatives he really has is lacks bulk, and he can get controlled at the point of attack by a single blocker. Well, that can probably be coached to get some more moves, which you're a rookie, you should. And lax bulk just means that you need to eat and hit the weight room. Like, Give me one second. I uh, want to check out. His positives? Okay. Osa, let's see here. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with Osa. Yeah, I think we could do a whole lot worse. And it does fit a need as well. So, oh, we got two picks here. So we're back up again. So whoever you were thinking about before, let's go again. Well, actually, here, scroll up a little bit. I just want to see who went between our picks. Oh, yeah. Anthony uh, Schwartz did go off the board of the Patriots. Yeah. Yep. Uh, by the way, should we should we draft a new punter this year? It's. I feel like <laughs> drafting a punter like. You got to have faith that the guy's going to be a Hall of Famer and spend a draft pick on him. Uh, do you know anything about the running backs in this draft? Uh, I Yeah, I've paid a little bit of attention. Um, so scroll to the top of the available guys. Khalil Herbert is the top guy on the board. Yeah, I mean, honestly. I've heard Jamar Jefferson, Oregon State. But... We're like, we're we're past the top five running backs at this point. Yeah. Um, we took a tackle, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We took Mayfield with our second. Um, we we haven't taken an edge though, have we? We've not taken an edge or a linebacker or a linebacker. Um, well, wait, it's don't, not. Let's a... go up to the the overall board because I I want to I want to make sure we're not reaching. I want to see good value here. Um, so we do have an edge listed in, in that top bracket there. Uh, we got a couple of receivers, but we weren't crazy about either of them. You want to scroll down a little bit? And, uh, yeah. Checking out your notes. Yeah. For the edge rusher there. Uh, see if I had anything written for him. Oh, I had – wait, no, that was the other guy. What's his – they have him listed as an edge, and I don't have him listed as an edge. Who is it? Um, the <laughs> – you say it. Yeah, I have no I'll idea. Take a shot. I'll take a shot. Adito Kunbo. 
Ajun DJ. Yeah, it's probably pretty good. Um, I will say I'm seeing several receivers available that um that that have kind yeah, of been I've grouped heard. in this late round Packers target kind of yeah. The, uh, Austin Watkins, Cade Johnson, um, you know, a couple options there. Uh, I mean, we're definitely we're at the point in the draft where it's it's getting to be tough pickings. Um, yeah, I mean, hmm. it wouldn't be bad to take a receiver here, I suppose. Uh, who's who's I haven't even stars yeah, next to some of these receivers here? See some of these receivers. I think. They had one on Seth Williams. <laughs> I put next to Seth Williams, I did eh. I said eh. So, yeah, who else we got there? Yeah, we got Austin we, Watkins, we, we could check out. Mm. Um, yeah, we, yeah, where's Watkins? Watkins. So, He's not a vertical not threat, but will be a lot of appealing targets at this point. Um, Kate Johnson. Yeah, I'm not loving it right now. Hey, we can go crazy and take like, I mean, we're going to really beep up at secondary, but Sean Wade would be like, you know, you can get yourself a potential shutdown down at corner, if you want to go crazy with a guy who had a ground, grade, round one grade, but Goot would never take him, though. Well, here, let, let me read about this Nordium guy. Let me take another look here. Um, can you scroll back to the top of the available players list? Yep, there you go. Scroll down a little. Whew, this is a toughie, man. Uh, what are the details on, on the top edge guy? Large explosive pass rush who flashes ability on occasion. Strong and gets leverage on form and keeps his feet moving, possesses a solid build and is forceful up the field. Shows Billy bend off the edge, keeps his feet off blocks, stays with the action, and possesses a closing burst. Um, so he's just spotty. The bottom line is that this guy comes with a terrific amount of upside as well as growth potential, and he could develop into a starting defensive lineman in the NFL, or he could bounce from team to team and never eat expectations. Um, so he sounds a whole lot like um, Dayton Jones. Yeah, man, I don't know. I guess it's a comp pick, so I'd be okay with uh, the best wide receiver, the best edge, or, or even just best player in general. You know, I you, you've seen more tape than me, so I don't know if any of these guys jump out to you. Yeah, so this is where, like, j just because the people in this mock draft have these guys ranked this way, it doesn't mean the NFL teams have them ranked this way. Like, for example. Like I would have, uh, Sami. Yeah, Fajardo is available. I would yeah, have... I, yeah, I would have him ranked way higher than two fourteen. Man, uh, Tamori and Terry, I would, I have him ranked higher than two twenty two. Um, I, I don't exactly agree with these rankings. Um, I think like I think Fioko is way better than Palmer, Surratt, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Wap. So, uh, how, how, so... About this? how about this? Let's get a look at the wide receivers and the edge. And see if we, if we see anyone who jumps out to us. Uh, uh, so so Fihoko jumped out to me. Um, after that, no one really. Oh, Rico Busi jumped out to me. Four forty. What? <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me read you his. Uh, 
So I watched some tape on him, and then I, I looked up his draft profile. And um, Big play throughout every time he touches the ball. Yeah. Very good athlete in regard to his quickness and short area agility. He's a willing blocker in the run game, in the passing game. He's dynamic and explosive as a route runner. Doesn't appear to be a natural hands catcher and has instant fun the ball in his body, but he's always a threat for the big play. He may also add value in the return game as well. I'm like, damn, he checks off a lot of boxes for what Green Bay needs. Oh, by the way, scheme fit fits any offensive scheme. What's what's his measure, Bulls? How big is he? Uh, 6'2", 193. There, there's another one I was going to look at, too. Um, here it is, SI. Yep, here it is. Silky smooth with a clear understanding of how to attack leverage. Rico Busse Jr. finished out his career at the University of Hawaii after dominating at North Texas for the majority of his college career. Busse dominates in the intermediate level of the field with his smooth breaks and not- notable acceleration. He routinely plucks the football at the highest point, boasting both quick and strong hands. And Buck showed excellent concentration and ability to make contact while staying both calm and controlled. He has a lot more speed than he might get credit for. He is an easy route runner who can create instant separation on various levels of the field. After suffering a knee injury that stole most of his 2019 campaign, Boosie looks like he may have lost a tad bit of his explosiveness. Even with a slight less juice, Boosie is an attractive all around athletic profile uh, to affect the game in a variety of roles. Underage, mostly in the situation. Talented wide receiver, a best that most don't know about. This combination of smoothness, rubber, and hand strength is a lot on early day three, not out of the Yeah, man. Early so that, that sounds pretty appealing. Uh, I do want to say um, your your volume was cutting out for some oh, reason. It was pretty difficult to hear while you were sorry uh, reading that. Um, yeah, they have a ranked at four forty. Yeah, so I'm curious. Let's compare Boosie to um, to Fajeko. Uh, for his RAS or for just oh, we like to look up Fajeko's um, background. Yeah, I, for some reason it's really hard to hear you right now. It sounds like something switched with your headset. Not at all, no. So I, I'll read what I can see here. So we got, uh, let's see, came off a career season. He's a large game controlling wide out go to receiver. Uh, couldn't be stopped. He's physical, out muscles. All right, well, Andrew just cut off the screen, so I can't see anymore. Uh, I can't hear you at all now. How about now? Okay, yeah. You can hear me now? Yeah? Yeah, you're much better now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, not not sure what happened there. All right, I just had to take the, the headset off then. All right, well, we'll just go back at it then, I guess. Um, yeah, so if you want to bring it. All right, so back up i was in the middle of reading it um oh, there you go so so yeah i mean he, he sounds like a he, he's a go-to guy he's big he's physical um hits the contested throws good hand-eye coordination um extends his hands to make the catch uh so go down a little bit and come back to the quarterback uh I mean, so he sounds like he's got a lot of the intangibles you look for. In sounds a lot like EQ. Yeah. Um, let's see. He he lacks burst, though. Kind of has one speed. Um, okay. His, his Let me see what the other running is. a little bit sharper. I, I, he sounds pretty good to me for a pick this late. Yeah. I mean, he's. I had him starred for a reason. 
I mean, yeah, he's a big play threat whenever his number is called. Like, seems like someone that Green Bay would be interested in. So I'm cool with taking him. Like, yeah, so am I. I would, I would have him ranked higher than where he's ranked right now. Yeah, they got him ranked down pretty low. Oh, um, Trevin Grimes is on the board too, by the way. Yeah, actually, they got a few receivers on down low here who are on my list. Um, let me consult real quick because I want to see who I've got ranked highest. I mean, this is the this is the beauty of the draft, right? I mean. I mean, who can forget when the Raiders drafted, like, Darius Hayward Bay with, like, the eighth overall pick, you know? When he was probably ranked, like, the 200th receiver on the board for most other teams. We haven't taken a receiver yet, and we're at the end of the fourth round, so. Yeah, man, and just looking at the rest of my board, like, yeah, there's some guys who I might have rated higher overall but we've already hit up like that position group pretty right early. so at um, some point you, you do like we're gonna draft a receiver in this draft like i know we are at some point yeah i'm i'm okay with uh Fihoko. yeah i feel like green bay for what green bay needs and like their draft style Fahoko would be higher on this board than what other teams would have too so he fits he fits what green bay and lafleur wants in a receiver so we're going with him. By the way, I'm like Green Bay could never hire hire us to work the draft room because we would just let the clock expire like every fucking time because <laughs> we couldn't make a decision. Yeah, we wanted, no, they, wanted. they've done all this work ahead of time, you know. We, yeah. Um. Ooh, Garrett Lawlow is still available at linebacker. Yeah, and we haven't taken a linebacker, and I kind of have always wanted to take. Like, I wanted to take one. I just think. Find a spot to take. Oh, like, I also got like, Darius Stills, who yeah showed some. Well, I on. have uh, actually, this is around when I took Darius Stills. I had him going in the sixth round, and we are now in the. Are we in the sixth? Yeah, nope, we're in the fifth, back of the fifth. So he's gonna you know, go. Maybe... I will say though, I've got Wallow. Uh, based on the research I've done, I've got him ranked as a top 100 player. Yeah. Um, you want to take a quick look at his description? Yeah, I haven't, I didn't do a ton of stuff on the linebackers because uh, we have other needs more than linebackers, but I did a little bit, and his was one that came that popped up for me. Um, Let's see, Trev. Comes from TCU, which, you know. He's they, a former they safety. Coaches there. He's a former safety, so he's probably got some good speed. He's an outstanding blitzer. Yep. He has closing speed in order to finish. Instincts are still developing, but he shows an understanding of concepts being developed in front of him. Really good athleticism. Awareness to play zone, but also the elusiveness in order to sustain man coverage. He's a consistent tackler. We need consistent tacklers. Um, so he's raw, but he's a little bit on the lighter side, but probably could gain some weight. Yeah, I mean, this guy sounds like he could be a player with just a year or two of coaching and we're not going to ask him to come in and play right away and we could use an inside linebacker. Yeah. I mean, honestly, he sounds like a guy who's probably not going to start over Chris Barnes right away, but could probably be better than Chris Barnes within a year. And we also got, uh, um, Kamal Martin too, which we don't know what we're going to have him. So he'd be like linebacker three on the board. I think we still got, uh, Ty Summers too for now. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I like it. I'm I'm all for that. I want a linebacker, so I, I'm I'm cool with that. I'm yeah, I'm good with that pick. And we're up and getting five more picks anyway. So when we there stills goes to freaking Chicago though. <sighs> Fucking Bears. Um, Ooh. Benjamin St. Juice. Well, we already got too many freaking corners, but St. Juice was a guy 
popped off for me at one point. Um, Trevin Grimes is still there, the receiver from Florida. Kerry Vincent. Vincent Jr. isn't he would be a bloodline, wouldn't he? What wasn't there a Kerry Kerry Vincent in the NFL a few years ago? Um, I I believe he is a bloodline player. I'm not completely positive. Um, sorry, I'm just um, checking my big board right now to see where I've got him. And they got some messed up rankings on this. KJ Britt at 243. Wow. Malcolm Koontz, the edge of Buffalo at 241. Yeah, um, what about hey, what about an interior lineman? I do I don't think we go interior lineman. We took three of them last year. Yeah. Like unless you've got someone who like who are you looking at? I don't. I'm I'm not at all. Um in fact none of the tackles are really even popping off at me anymore anyway. So uh what what about our running backs? Uh this will be where you would have to shine. I haven't heard I haven't gotten to do too much running back work yet. Um I've heard of Elijah Mitchell and Jarrett Patterson. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the backs we're looking at right now, I don't know if we're going to have a huge difference in value from someone. I think we would just need, there. like, a gadget player, someone who would fill, uh, you know, that gadget role, like the Tavon Austin role that we had, and, uh, like, a kick returner. Like, that's what we need. We need we need a kick returner at this point in the draft. Yeah, yeah. and I feel like we're going to have better success looking at wide receiver for that. So who do we got there? Uh, the guys who I had circled earlier who could do that are probably off the board, unless uh, Eskridge is still on the board. Eskridge no, is super he, fast. Eskridge went like I think he went in the third. Oh yeah. Um, um, to all the guys I'm seeing right now that I know of, I'm pretty sure all of them are like big, strong guys, not necessarily gadget guys. Well, I'll tell you what, we're taking Rico Busse with our last pick. Since he's like he's ranked like seven hundred on this board, so <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, man. I, let's check out the overall board again. Yeah. Um, Tylen Hill. Nah. I, I mean, we could go with another corner. Like I, I like. Both Santa Juste and yeah, uh, and Kerry Vincent Jr. Um, yeah, I mean, hey, and that Goot does that too, doesn't he? Doesn't he just go like three at one position? So it's yeah. not film. Um, at the board, see who sticks. So I mean, it's not out of the question because we need a nickel. We need another outside corner to replace Kevin King next year, and we could use a safety. So um, this guy was used as a nickelback rather than a number one or two corner. Yeah, he dude, I, I don't think he suits the nickel, though. He's a big boy. He's like 6'3 or something. I would almost say you put him behind Kevin King, let him grow and develop, and then we can slide uh, Farley into the nickel. He he possesses plus, plus the side and skill to be used. In, I like A. I like – I like guys that are, you know, versatile. This guy is. Up here it says that he's explosive and flashes on the scene, displaying suddenness in his game, and he squares and wraps up and tackles. We need that. Hey, let's this take let's decision's take done. All right, we got – We're in round seven, I believe. Six. Ooh, Bills just took a receiver I like right before us. Uh, yeah, who else has gone off the board here? So – Oh, Trevin Grimes went – Dallas is loading up on receivers, dude. Holy cow. Ooh, Derek Barnes to the Chiefs. That's a nice pick. Yeah, man. <laughs> this this is the no man's land part of the draft. Like, it's uh, 
you gotta have you gotta have like draft crushes like that you really want at this point. Like like for me, Buse, Rico Buse. We're bringing a little Hawaii, a little a little uh luau to Hawaii to Wisconsin. That's right. Um so who we got on the board here? Hey, ooh, actually let's take a quick look at Justin Hilliard, linebacker. I expected him to be from Ohio out. State. He's a talented three down linebacker coming off a career campaign. He's quick to read and diagnose. He takes proper angles to the action and breaks down well. Using his hands to protect himself, keeps the action in front of him, doesn't get caught out of position, and flows well to the play. His negatives are he displays average speed in pursuit and struggles catching ball handlers from the backside. Possesses average size. He had just one year. Dude, how'd this guy fall to the round six? Do you know who else had average size? Um, yeah, I, w- I wouldn't forget the name there. Middle linebacker for uh, Zach Thomas and London Fletcher. Yeah, it, yeah, it didn't work I mean, them. There, there is a history of interior linebackers who are just a little bit undersized going late and having Hall of Fame careers. Ooh, look at that. He offers potential at several linebacker positions and will be an inexpensive utility defender at the next level. Holy cow. I mean, I haven't watched tape on this guy, so I can't say. I got to take this guy's well, word for it. But So be, before we decide on that, though, cause, cause he does sound pretty appealing. And, and if, if for nothing else, just for special teams depth. Um, but I am curious. Uh, I see Jonathan Cooper, uh, edge player there. Um, let's get a look at what they have to say about him. Um, tough, intelligent defensive end with marginal size and speed. Fires off the snap with a terrific first step, displays good athleticism, can bend up the edge. Fast up the field, immediately alters his angle of attack. Flat, plans to pursue, plays from the backside. Plays with terrific pad level and consistently gets leverage on opponents. Negatives are he, he gets easily tied up at the point by blocks. He's out positioned from the play by lesser opponents. Lacks bulk, does not possess great pursuit speed. Cooper was a hardworking defensive end for Ohio State, but may be physically tapped out. He'll be a pass rush specialist at the next level who can line up in a three-point stance and stand over the tackle. All right, there's one more guy I want to take a quick look at here is uh, Larry Roundtree, the third there, running sure. back. Larry. Nice size running back who's best between the tackles, resilient, slices between defenders, works runs, uh, possesses outstanding vision, shows a burst through the hole and runs with authority, fouls blocks everywhere on the field, and it's tough to bring down. He's a willing blocker who squares in defenders and takes them from action. Negatives are he gets in trouble when he tries to run east and west. Not a smooth or quick perimeter ball carrier. Plays to one speed. Uh, he played well at senior bowl bowl practices and displays a complete game. Wow. Has a size and ability to be a third running back at the next level as well as a situational starter. Hmm. I mean, I'll say hearing that he played well at the senior bowl, that um, that gives him some brownie points for me. Uh and we, we probably do need some running back depth. Uh, I mean, we're one injury away from uh, only having, you know, we could potentially only have A.J. Dillon, who's, you know, he, he looks promising, but he's really only had one. Well, I will uh, I will chime in, and I, I will say that I think Green Bay already has their third running back already on the roster, and they're really high on him. That's they signed him. To- they signed him to a futures contract. Let me, I'll, I'll look him up real quick. Um, um, let's see. They really liked him and he played really well. He had really good college tape. Um, I mean, I know they got Dexter Williams, but he hasn't really shown much in two years. Patrick Taylor. Okay. They really liked Patrick Taylor out of Memphis. So. I think he's going to be a third running back. I'm not sure, but you can never have enough running backs. I like what what I what I sound. I think it's it's either between um, Hilliard and um, um, Round Roundtree. Yeah, man. I guess I 
I would feel comfortable with either. I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Have know. we taken a linebacker yet? What's that? Have we taken a linebacker yet? No. I, I believe we just took a linebacker with the last pick. Okay, so we'll take a running back then. And maybe he's still there? He's not still there. Damn. Went to Tampa, of course. Let's see. Um, got? Koontz is still available. Yeah. He was on my... I like that analysis. Kuntz is a bit of a hidden gem as an edge rusher as he plays bigger than he is listed and he's faster than his time speed. He can be used standing over the tackle or occasionally out of a three-point stance and Kuntz will make an NFL roster if he's used properly. I like that. Two-year starter at Buffalo. He can bend off the edge and plays with balance. He's fluid and he quickly locates the ball and works to finish off opponents. Smooth pursuing the play laterally, uses his hands to protect himself and is really off his feet. Takes on double team blocks and shows the ability to hold the ground and occupy gaps. Slides off opponents, shows a variety of move. He already has a variety of moves and plays through the whistle. Relatively effective dropping off the line and playing in space. Dang, I like that. Relatively effective at dropping off the line and playing in space. Yeah, I mean, honestly, all, all those positives sound like things you really look for in an edge player. And looking at the negatives, he's got a, a short burst of speed, um, which causes him to not be a great backside pursuit guy. Just got to get to the quarterback quick then, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think you, you need every defender to be an elite backside pursuit guy. Um, no, and he's going to be a rotational guy anyway. He's not going to be expected to be a three-down player. So, yeah. yeah. Play like 10, 10, 15 snaps per game. Be like, hey, go give Z a rest and just play 100% when you're out there. I mean, I like it. And we and we could use that. We don't really have a fourth one. And who knows what's going to happen with uh, Preston after next year. I mean, not well, I saying mean, this guy's an answer, early. but. We did take an edge earlier. Oh, yeah, we did. Hey. Which actually, but which we had but the edge we took earlier can play on the line, too, though. He might be more of our three technique. Yeah. Um, what else might we have here, though? No one else is popping off the board to me, unless I you want to take a kicker. Down the board. Hey, actually, by, you know what? Not for nothing. Uh, Green Bay actually uh, – Went to a kicker's pro day the other day. Did you hear about that? I mean, Mason Crosby is getting old. But who knows? Oh, I mean, you know, honestly, not now that you say it, I, I haven't looked into kickers at all. But Mason Crosby makes a lot of money for a kicker. He's getting old. It wouldn't surprise me if we tried to draft a replacement, um, especially in the cap crunch that we're in. I like the reliability that Crosby gives us, but it's a business, man. I could definitely see us trying to take a cheap ass kicker. I'm fine with it. Actually, I'm, I'm kind of cool with it. Um, Easily the best kicker in this draft. Yeah. Big leg. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I feel better about the kicker than anyone else, if, if I'm being <laughs> honest. We're taking a goddamn kicker. Kicker in the six. Final pick of the draft. Oh, I, I'm sorry, man. I, I already know who I want. Well, hey, at least show me who's on the big board. Oh, you... <laughs> sorry. Full results. I'll, I'll, I'll go back. All right. So, here we go. So, after our kicker, we went. Anyone else jump off the board to you? Jonathan Cooper went Ohio State. Oh, Tamari and Terry finally went off the board. Yeah, Tamari and Terry is a guy who, who jumps out to me. Uh, but we are already took the Hoko. Malcolm Kuntz went to Dallas. 
Oh, there's the other kicker that went to Arizona. We got we got the premier kicker of this draft. Right, we got him. Off of Johnson right. to the to the Steelers. I I like that. KJ Britt went to the Seahawks. Lenore, he was a cornerback who uh, intrigued me. Yeah, I'm happy Josh, we got Josh Ball off into tackle. Um, I feel like that's a pretty good seventh round oh. late seventh round pick there. Rico Busse might have been the last receiver taken in this draft, but he's going to finish his career as the best receiver out of this draft. Yeah. <laughs> Rico. All right. Then Mr. Irrelevant, uh, Nick Neiman, Neiman. linebacker to the Bucks. Okay. So let, let's let's take a look at our overall draft. Well, so if I hit the back button, wouldn't you think it would take me to see the normal one? Like, I don't see a button for it. I'm not sure. I actually haven't run this scenario before. We're probably safer to just go through round by yeah. round. Yeah. So we went with Caleb Farley. Caleb Farley. So th- there is our future at cornerback. And then we went with Jalen Mayfield. Solidify the offensive line. Mm-hmm. And then round three, we went with Javon Holland. So our secondary is looking nice. Yeah, secondary is nice. loaded uh, for the present and the future. Yeah, so even if even if we got – so Kevin King's gone after this year, but replace him with Caleb Farley. Farley and Jair Alexander is our lockdown outside corners. And then we got probably Savage potentially going down to the star role and playing out of the slot there. And then in goes Javon Holland, one of the best safeties in this draft. Pair him right up next to Adrian Amos. And there's our five fucking secondary members. Yeah, dude, that's – and honestly, you know, if you're looking at it, uh, like that's that's good looking at it for the future. If you look at it this year, you go Alexander and King on the boundary, you slide Farley into the slot, um, then you got Savage and Amos at safety, and then Holland. I feel like he he has the sort of game where he can come in and kind of play that uh, the Raven Green kind of mm-hmm. um, safety linebacker hybrid role. Uh, and we play so much nickel that you know having that guy in there, uh, man, that that could be a ball hawking secondary. Yeah, I mean uh, Holland might not like be listed as a starter, but he would play a ton of snaps even as a rookie. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, for sure, so. for sure. So I feel good about that, man. We solidified the offensive line. Secondary's looking good. And then in round four, we come in, boom, here is some defensive line depth, a, a penetrator who could grow into, like, hopefully a, a solid starter. <laughs> By the way, so we're go- so at this point, we're going into uh, round round four here, or round five even right here. And – there's still been no receiver taken. Like, can you imagine, like, the Green Bay, like, fan base just literally, like, freaking out right now? Like, they're it's not so going to take a receiver. It's, so it's like, I – like, so I'm not a guy who's, like, pounding the table for round one receiver. I think more important positions. I mean, for Christ's sakes, we were the number one offense last year. But I do think it's a priority given the future. But, dude, I dude see... the, way, the way the board falls, you, you need yeah. to take – talent where it's available i see a lot of late round receivers like it's almost like taking a quarterback in like fantasy football if you don't get one of the best ones early it's best to wait for the later ones because there's a lot of really good late well like god damn it rico busse's ranked 440 and he should be like a one in the top 150 i feel like like Damn, I'm cool with waiting, but we do take okay. So we do take our receiver with our second fourth. We take uh, yeah, Fioco, I, I which like that, so so through the fourth round, we've solidified the secondary, we solidified the offensive line, then we get defensive line depth and wide receiver depth. Dude, we're we're checking all the boxes right now, and I don't feel like we've had to reach for any player. So, so now with the rest of the draft, now they're all day three picks, but now you can just kind of literally go with best player that you feel who has a chance to be a starter in the league and contribute to your team. And they can be at any position here. Yeah. 
at yeah, this point. either that or, or you know take more bites at the apple of a particular position you want to fill. Yeah, you got a lot of options in in these late round picks. Like this is like round five and six here is like where I where I'm fine with taking like more receivers because we only have one receiver under roster until next year. So cornerback too, like actually it's corner and receiver. So um, in the fifth round we go with uh, Garrett Wallow, awesome linebacker out of TCU, and then Benjamin St. St. Juice. You know, dude, yeah, this secondary is gonna be. We are making sure the secondary is going to be good going forward. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Green Bay is going to be a no-fly zone. Yeah, but dude, honestly, when you look at the roster, of like everyone we've drafted, they have a legit shot to have snaps. Like they're going against yeah. guys like, you know, Chad and Sullivan. He played solid, but he, you know, he could very well lose his job. And then after that, yeah. like KB and Ento, Josh Jackson. Like, are these really guys that we're confident are better than anyone we're drafting right now? Mm-hmm. Uh, we go with Larry Roundtree. The, you know, we're just adding to that running back depth, making sure you know, there's always fresh new blood, challenge and push there. And, and then game very important for a little four offense. Got to keep them fresh. And then we and then, and then we're thinking ahead, and then we get the best kicker in the draft. Best goddamn kicker in the draft. You know what? I bet Green Bay might seriously think about taking a kicker in this draft, even as it goes Mason Crosby. I'm curious. I I do wonder because, like, once we started talking about it, I see a major possibility of it happening just given the cap situation. They went and looked at his pro day. Like, I wonder if we could get any compensation at all for Crosby if we traded him. Like, maybe. No, I bet we want. Yeah, I, I bet not. Because I can just see if we cut him, man, the Bears are going to fucking snap yeah. him. <laughs> When's the last time you've ever seen a kicker traded, though? I don't think kickers have ever been – but yeah. Janikowski might have been traded. That's it. Maybe. Dude, that's that's the thing. I You look at all the poor kicking around the league, I would be – I would give a fucking fifth rounder for a proven kicker. Yeah, yeah, kickers don't get traded, dude. It's, it's crazy. Um, and then in the seventh – Steal the draft, Rico Busse. If Green, if Green Bay drafts Rico Busse at any point in the draft next week, dude, I, I I'm buying his jersey. I'm buying that dude's jersey. You're high on this dude, man. Oh yeah. How can you not? Did you read that that bio on him? Yeah, so no, like the best really receiver in the draft. So I like this man. We got we we completely fleshed out the secondary. I'm oh, confident yeah, but, we'll I'm, have a healthy secondary moving forward. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you did that because it didn't give me it, by the way, when I hit back. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get, uh, we got solid receiver depth, you know, some nice developmental guys, a um, little bit of running back depth. Uh, we get a, a, a guy on the defensive line who might not contribute a lot right away, but could probably really grow into a good player, uh, much in the same way uh, as looking at uh, Kiki Kingsley. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it, he started out a little slow, but started to come on strong at the end of last year. And, and I think he's going to step up this year. So nice depth there uh, and solidify the offensive line with Jalen Mayfield, which like, Hey, you hope that he's a right tackle of the future, but even if he kicks inside, I still feel pretty good about it, man. Um, mm-hmm. Just cause it, that's the name of the game at this point of Rogers career is protect the quarterback uh, and actually, coincidentally, end of Roger's career, beginning of Love's career, you know, it's the same thing. Like, you, protecting the quarterback is going to be very important. Like, mm-hmm. it's, the only time where you can really skimp on that is in the absolute prime of a quarterback's career. And even then, it's a risky proposition. Right. Uh, so, so, I like our move there. I feel pretty good about this mock draft, dude. Yeah, I. it wasn't the way I thought it was going to go. I'm really surprised Caleb Farley was on the board for us and <laughs> there. I mean, holy cow! Like that, that was that was a name just a few weeks ago. I was like, man, eh, there's there's a top ten pick like off the board, you know? Like, yeah, but dude, you think about a couple weeks ago, everyone was mocking Greg Newsom to the Packers, and now you know there's people saying he might be gone in the mid-teens. You know, it, it's a fluid thing. It shifts around. 
Uh, and, and I always say, go back to the tape. You know, yeah, combine numbers are nice, but I think a lot of times people overthink it. Just watch the tape. See who produced. Caleb yeah. Harlan is the top cornerback in the country. He had a minor back procedure. And, like, even if it does end up recurring in his career, if you can get five cheap years out of him and he plays well for three of them it, at the end of Aaron Rodgers' career, like, hey, I'm not going to call that a, a busted first-round pick. <laughs> could you imagine could, could you imagine a world where, like, Green Bay's got – two like you know like top 10 cornerbacks in the league on the team shutting down on the outside with the savage and amos safety tandem and then if you got javon holland in there as your nickelbacker oh man man we're we're talking a lot of coverage sacks with that defense we're talking we're talking like tampa defense good now better than tampa i I like this i like this I'm, i'm i'm pumped up about it um yeah, yeah, that, that was a good draft. So not to we, mention Rashawn Gary's about to bust out this year too and have like fifteen sacks. You know, it's I don't even think that's like out of the realm of possibility. No, Rashawn Gary hasn't even reached the ceiling yet, dude. He's still getting better and he's already a starter. And like he's he, he's a starter. I I don't think Preston Smith's starting next year. Oh no, he shouldn't be. He should not be. He's gonna be a great. They might kid. These. They might list Preston as a starter, but I bet when you look at snap counts, he doesn't out snap Gary. Yeah, there's something wrong if that's the case. I mean, Gary, Rashawn Gary really, really came on strong at the end of last Rashawn year. Gary was our best pass rusher in the playoffs. He did better than fucking Z did. Dude, and that's the thing. Like, Z, he has a lot of technique. And Gary just tends to win on a lot of just raw power and athleticism. As he develops more and more technique, he's just going to keep getting better. I heard that um, Z said that he wants to start being called a defensive end and not a linebacker. And I'm wondering, I'm I'm wondering because I think I think defensive ends get paid more than linebackers do. He, dude, he already gets paid over $20 million. Yeah, I know. He gets paid a, a king's ransom. So, yeah. Yeah, like I think his cap hit for next year is like $23 million or something. Yeah, he yeah he makes – he's making like – Which is – it's crazy considering we signed him. He was not a full-time starter when we signed him. We took a chance on him. I, and somehow we're still paying him this. Much. I think that's why. I think that's why Z like assigned immediately as soon as he got that contract off. He's like, "What? Yeah, all right, cool." I mean, it's thankfully it's worked out, but yeah, man. Could you imagine if it didn't? Can you imagine paying him for like a twenty-three million dollar guy who didn't work out? Goot would have been fired. I'm confident of that. Would you rather have Z? With his contract number right now, or Khalil Mack with his contract number? This like is they, question. like my first instinct was Khalil Mack all the way. But I, think, I, I think I think Z's had better stats though. Yeah, I stopped myself and I'm like, well, if we actually look at the production, and and like Khalil is probably on a better Bears defense, but Z is still producing more on the Packers. Now, yeah, I think it just goes with the scheme fit. Well, and, and the fact that we didn't have to give up, like, two first-round picks to get Khalil Mack, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. It's uh, – One of those picks would have been the Rashawn Gary pick. So, there you go. Well, man, this was a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to be doing this again real soon, just probably about, like, what, six days from now. So. Real deal, baby. Get your cheese curds ready, Packer fans. Oh shit, man! Now I really want cheese curds. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to buy some cheese curds for. You. Hey, let's let's have some cheese curds and watch the draft here on Thursday cheese night. I, I hope I hope I hope you guys will join us. All right. Well, let's hope that the real draft goes as well as this mock draft did. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. All right. Here's to Caleb Farley falling to us at 29. Cheers.
Cheers. Okay, uh, so this would be the transition point. Do you still have time? Do you want?